It's finally beginning! Welcome to Skep Talk, everybody! I'm Forrest Valkai, and I'm joined today by the lovely and, and handsome uh, Aaron Ra. How are you, man? Well, I, I don't know that I can trust you anymore after, now that you've used the words <laughs> lovely and handsome. Uh, I don't think that those the have applied to me in a long time. and magnanimous. <laughs> the elegant and graceful Aaron Ra. Yeah, yeah, let's just stop blowing smoke up my ass. How are you doing? <laughs> How are you doing, Forrest? I'm doing really well, man. How are you? It's all right. It's all right. It's still kicking. There's minor pandemonium going on behind me. As I have four right very playful dogs that I cannot, they cannot shut up. So hopefully that won't be a problem I'm, during I'm, the show. Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. As long as they live there in your streaming room, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> It's man, I'm working on a, a massive, massive charity thing that I'm releasing this summer. I was I talked about the last time I was on, and so I have been just like locked on the other side of the room, just doing editing all freaking week, and I will be for the rest of this week. And it probably won't even be done after that. It's just absolutely insane. We got like 14 or 15 like two hour episodes that I need to like be editing out, and they're just absolute nuts. Um, the the what we got like five content? different camera angles. It's it's a TTRPG. So we we played a, a game called Tales of the Valiant, um, which is a it's you know a response to D and D being owned by Hasbro and Hasbro behaving badly and all these things. This is this massive, like just it was like a Kickstarter project I think that became like this massive thing, and now they've got like actual books and maps and and they've got new classes and new like uh, 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 cool abilities and it's just awesome. And so. Um, the, the, the biggest problem is that you get too much cool shit too early. So like a lot of people were playing Tales of the Valiant rules with like D and D monsters and they would just wipe the floor with everything. And the Tales of the Valiant people had to come out and be like, Hey, use our monsters because you are going to be overpowered for everything. If you try to play D and D with our characters. And so we, uh, we played like this massive, like 30 ish hour game, um, uh, and recorded everything. Uh, and I'm chopping that up and releasing it in a series of episodes all to raise money for Doctors Without Borders, and that'll be out later this uh, uh, in, in this summer. Um, and so I've got like five cameras and like fucking eight microphones and 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 everybody's special color gradients that I need to put in for every person who's talking at any given time. And it's all the, it is the most amount of work I've ever put into anything uh, editing wise or production wise, I should say. And I could not be happier with the result. I'm so so geeked up that's one of the reasons i was running late getting here today because i was working with the we have a composer who made like all custom orchestral music for it and i was like listening to some tracks that he just sent me um that were like some really cool like reveals for like these massive cool things that we have I'm, I'm just, oh my glob dude i'm so fucking geeked up about it <laughs> i could talk about it all night i'm so excited uh, well, I, I was wondering about the because normally you do you know like science education content, and the, the the moment of frustration that I've had is that I've, I've had a couple of videos that where I really do exhaustive work on a science education bit, like the phylogeny videos that I tend to do, that, that, the mm -hmm. ones that I like to do, that involve so much of uh, hunting for just the right visuals, right? And when you're looking for video, especially, it takes a really long time uh, to to get everything oh, yeah. matched up exactly right, and it it. It can take me days of no, no days of no sleep, like because I, I tend to mm -hmm. I t once once I have something that's that's just written, it's recorded, and now all I got to do is edit it. I will do that until I can't see anymore. Uh huh. And it, yeah, you just get yeah. too excited. You can't see you you see the finish line, I, you can't see I anything do. else. Yeah, I do. And and this one recently took me three days just to do the editing and when i say three days i don't mean three eight hour days i mean, <laughs> I mean smell bad from two days no sleep <laughs> still plugging away at it <laughs> yep yeah i mean I, I mean i mean that i've done 30 hours of work in two days is, is what i'm saying yep. but the frustrating thing is when i put up those videos the, the science audience is so small it's frustrating you get like eight thousand views or something in in like in like a week or something but if you just turn on a camera and talk no effort yeah. those go those sell that's, if it's, if it's that drama, is always oh it's, it's all over the place if it's drama especially you know i 
I know if I if I wanted to get a million views on any video, all I have to do is be an asshole in it, and it'll be fine. <laughs> but like, but exactly. yeah, that's the thing. I, I remember so learning that before rich. I ever. Huh, yeah. If you want to get rich, I mean, all I got to do to get rich, honestly, if, if if money was my primary motivator, I would become the hateful bastard that I was trained to be. That that everybody in my family wanted me to be. I would say outrageously pugnacious, incredibly stupid things. I would say them with absolute confidence. I would be a complete dick about it. And all of that would charge people up to criticize everything I just said. And I would just sit back there and rake in the dough. Yeah. That's that's the biggest that's the thing that I learned before I ever became any kind of a YouTuber was like you, the the content that you pour your heart and soul into is the stuff that won't perform. And the 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 one that will take off is the stupid whatever the hell you put out just on a Tuesday afternoon drunken and, and just like oh, I'll put this out. That's going to be the million view video. Uh, and also that you know it, uh, stupid sells and like you could. I've talked about this especially like on TikTok, which has a phenomenal algorithm for getting discovered. But the bad side of that is that medical misinformation, for example, is rampant on TikTok. Because the more people argue with it, the more the algorithm's like, oh, people are really interacting with this. They must really like it. I'll put it out to more audience. I'll put it out to more people. And so the view, the video saying that this is a real thing that I responded to once, that antibiotic literally translates to against life, and therefore antibiotics kill every cell in your body, and therefore you should never take antibiotics. And I was like, here's why this is fucking dumb. And why does this channel have a half a million fucking subscribers? And all of the people are in the comments begging this guy for advice. Like, how do you kill? I've got multiple sclerosis. How do I cure it? And he's like, eat more avocados, I guess. And it's like, fucking dude, the only reason you're this popular is because every fucking doctor and biologist on this app is calling you an asshole. And like, that's what's growing your channel. It happens all the time. Uh, so, so yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> what you want to do to to resolve these these microbial issues is you need ultraviolet light thrust up your mm-hmm. ass in a suppository light yes. bulb of black light. Yes, that's how it works. <laughs> that's science. That's just real. Promote that on my channel and see how many hits it gets. Yeah, <laughs> and we and do the something fact like that there's a, no reason to light on the inside of the body or like you know like injections that would be like a cleansing like bleach. Yes. Yes, some sort of ble- yes, and the fact that there's no research to back that up and lots of research against it tells you that it's real because that means that big government and big pharma are trying to keep you away from the truth, which is that drinking fucking bleach cures cancer or whatever. Dumb fucking thing. God, uh, you know, it, the dumbest it is. argument I've heard all week was when I just saw yeah. just before I came online some guy arguing that the perp- the perpetuity of galactic rotation disproves deep time yeah because friction isn't an issue for anybody ever and you just <laughs> nobody so thinks about it it. Take, it takes a couple hundred million years for a galaxy to rotate once and yeah. you're saying that the fact that they do this in perpetuity mm-hmm. means that the universe is only a few thousand years old yeah it makes sense. It makes sense as long as you don't think about it at all. Uh, we've got a lot of great calls. We've already got uh, uh, lines filling up. As always, for everybody out there watching, uh, we always prioritize theist callers. So if you uh, are a theist, a creationist, a Christian, a Muslim, somebody who wants to challenge what we don't believe in or what we do believe in, if, if you're you know uh, uh, somebody who wants to talk about evolution, somebody who wants to talk about um Whatever weird homophobic or transphobic thing you think, uh, you know, it's, if if you want to talk about you know the, the realities of biology, you've got you know two biologists here who are excited to talk to you. So call in and 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 talk to us and see if you can actually you know uh, uh, give us something new, give us a, an argument that we haven't heard before, give us something that we might actually scratch our heads about, or if you just have genuine questions, that's also cool. We've had a lot of creationists you call in and ask there genuine there. questions about, yeah. Well, it's happened. I've had I have had a couple of times where people have called in and just asked genuine questions about evolution, and we give genuine answers, and they walk away learning a thing, and they call back next time and they ask new questions, and that's awesome. Um, and we're actually going to start with something that I'm really hoping, fingers crossed, uh, is going to be that because um, the first call we've got tonight. If you're cool with jumping in, you're, you're, you're good getting started. Absolutely, go ahead. Sick. 
The first call we've got tonight is Jonathan. Pronouns he, him, calling him from Arizona. Or um, uh, astronomical zygotes. What? Uh, th- th- somebody's calling him from Arizona and has questions about biology and evolution and what it means to be related to apes. So, Jonathan, you are on the line. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing good. You? I'm really, really good. Uh, so I'm you've got uh, two people here. You've got two people here uh, hosting the show today. Um, both of us are, are massive biology nerds. Um, and, and, and talking about evolution and apes and everything like this is what both of us do largely for a living. So you called out the perfect day. Um, will you please let us know exactly like what you're talking about? Like what, what's, your, what's your question in, in long form? Well, uh, first of all, I, I have heard that chimpanzees are the most closely related species to humans. Is that correct? Chimps and bonobos, yeah. Yeah, yeah ch- ch- chimpanzees, sometimes we can use a pair, a pair of, excuse me, an umbrella term of chimpanzees, which applies to, uh, the, you know, pan troglodytes and pan uh, paniscus, you know, the, the bonobos and the chimpanzees. Yeah. Yeah. I like to draw a distinction because it's it's more common. But like, yeah, it's what I, yeah. But yes, correct. And you see exactly what I'm saying. You called it a perfect day. We're both huge fucking nerds and we're going to get real pedantic and like make sure we say everything right. So be prepared for that. Uh, yeah, so what's up? But yes, yes, chimpanzees are the most closely related to humans. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay, so if that's the case, then why is it that despite my best efforts, I have been unable to father a human chimp hybrid? Uh, Your because best you have effort. a different number of chromosomes. Yeah, you have a different okay. number of chromosomes. That's what's called a, yeah, a free zygotic sure barrier. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure that matters. Uh, the the physical differences. It would. Well, not always. The, the the physical differences in in the 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 sex act are significant, and then there's the huge ethical questions. You know, the, pro- probably the biggest reason we we, we discovered that you know, when when Lulu Skidmore uh, went into Dubai and got a camel, and she uh, she she used laboratory techniques and artificial insemination, she got a 900 pound camel dad and a 140-pound llama mama, and they produced Rama the Kama, which is a hybrid. Now, camels and llamas are much further, more distant uh, genetically than we are from chimpanzees, but the, the physical differences were such that you needed laboratory techniques and you needed artificial insemination. If you do that, my suspicion is, because we are closer, that it wouldn't be that difficult to do to get a, a, a human chip hybrid. And it has been reputed that this has been attempted a number of times, but for ethical reasons, they never come all the way through. They'll get a positive, uh, uh, they'll get a claim, never documented, of course, because nobody wants to. Nobody wants to admit that they did it, right? It's like they, 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 they kind of don't even want the answer to this question, it seems. We have the we have the ability. We have we have people who have reportedly done this, but never let it get to term. If that makes any sense the, to you? Yeah, the, because the, the, then you have another, the of, Go ahead, Forrest. I, I was going to say the, the the biggest thing. What what Aaron's talking on here, n- not including the ethical side of it, um, but like what he was speaking to here is there's what we call barriers to reproduction in biology. Um, so there's prezygotic barriers, which are um, you cannot get to the stage where you create a zygote. Um, mechanical differences, talking about the you cannot have sex together, things just don't fit properly. Temporal differences, um, you're, you're in heat at different times, whatever. Um, uh, there's also postzygotic differences that say that like if you do get to a point where you have a sperm and egg meeting, you're not actually going to get anything out of that. Like differences in chromosomes, differences in, in 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 morphology that just aren't functional together, that you cannot hybridize this way. Um, with uh, chimps and humans, yeah, we're we're you know, who who knows if somebody really really fucking tried in a laboratory, you know. Um, as far as I know, it, it wouldn't make any sense because chimps have an extra uh, extra pair of chromosomes that we don't have, and that difference is not sustainable. Um, but you know, maybe some weird shit would happen. Uh, who knows? Uh, well, but my, my I would say the is, reason why that uh, my, I would say to, to ask such evolution. a question. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. I didn't mean to step on you. My my logic is that we have populations. We didn't have like a person that has this chromosomal fusion 
And then from that person, everybody else came. You know, there, there had to be a population of people at that time when they have the chromosomal fusion. And so the chromosomal fusion in one population eventually wins out or becomes dominant in that collective group, right? So there, I would think then, logically, even, even this, uh, this, this six million years of difference behind us, I would think that it would probably still be doable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, there's there's a lot of questions. The, the long and short of it is um, to to even ask a question like that um, kind of just shows that you're looking for a weird gotcha that doesn't exist to say like, well, two things are related, therefore they should be able to reproduce. As if any other situation ever, you know, like it, one of the more closest things to relate to, to whales is a hippopotamus. And yet we're not going to say that any whale can, you know, slither up on the land and bang a hippopotamus. Um, and it, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, you know, being, being closely related. I just, did, I just did a video on elephants and people yeah. will be surprised if, you know, people who think that humans and chimpanzees are so very distant from each other will think that elephants, African elephants and Asian elephants are the same damn thing, you know? Well, yeah. it's obviously the same kind. They can still, you know, produce after their kind, except that they can't. Mm -hmm. So African elephants and Asian elephants, there's apparent, there has reportedly been a single hybrid between the two of them. And all the time that we've had these things, you know, keeping them together and so forth, one hybrid, and that one hybrid only lived a few days. So there, there's yeah. the other problem, the viability of the offspring. What happens with evolution, yes. the, way that, the, way that this, uh, the, the way that evolution works, so you, have, uh, you have a population, say you have, this, this is the easiest way to describe it. There's, there's multiple different ways, but this, I, this is probably the easiest way. You have a single population, and you find themselves divided, uh, like you know, two different islands or whatever. Uh, and so, or, or between a wasteland, or there's a wasteland between them. And then, you know, novel mutations build up in both groups that are not shared between them because there's no gene flow between the two groups anymore. So it won't be mm -hmm. that long, that many generations before you can tell, is this a northern giraffe or is this a southern giraffe? If you happen to find one that was wandering in the wasteland between them, you would be able to look at these identifying characteristics to tell which one it is. Now, the, the longer they remain, with no gene flow between them, the more these differences build up, the, the, the lower the probability of being able to produce viable offspring. First of all, fertile offspring. Does it, you, you end up with an infertile hybrid like most mules? I say most, because <laughs> there is that yep. one exception. That's, stri yeah, strictly that's, uh, speaking, that's another post-zygotic barrier too, is that the, the offspring cannot produce more offspring. Exactly. And so at, at, at some point, they, they get so far apart, there's so many genetic differences build up that they can't produce anything living anymore. And mm -hmm. by that point, you have, by the, the definition of the biological species concept, you have speciation, distinct species. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that is the biggest thing is that like, you know, even, even if we were to sit here and say, you know, oh, well, humans and chimpanzees are so closely related, they share depending on how you crank the numbers somewhere between like 97 and 99% of their DNA is exactly the same. And all these things that still doesn't mean we're not separated by like seven to 9 million years of evolution. And like that fucking builds, it matters. By the way, uh, that dude hung up like immediately after we started talking, he, he, he said a couple of things. He tried to get another word in. Um, but the second we started actually answering the question, it was, it was right after, uh, just a little bit after you stopped talking and I started answering, he just dropped. Um, so goes to show that what we were talking, that's why I, did, I haven't said anything about it. So I've just been having a conversation with you because it really goes to show like this person heard probably in church, these atheists say that we're related to chimpanzees and they're like, okay, well then I should be able to fuck one. And like, I'm going to call them and tell them. And I don't know why he had a fucking country accent for that I don't, it sounded like my neighbors i live in oklahoma but well, like that's it, uh like that's the whole thing it's just it, it very clearly just either a bad troll or someone who genuinely didn't think we would have an answer and ran away the second we started giving one yeah i just love i would just love to see jim bob try a new scientific experiment well i ought to be able to fuck one well <laughs> why don't you just give yeah, that exactly, a try yeah. <laughs> yeah go for it have fun See what happens. Let's, let's see That's, how well that what, works. Is this, <laughs> well, and what's crazy is so, sometimes when when people call in, you know, on the call screen that I've got over here, it'll show like the last thing they called in about. It'll show like what their last prompt was, and the last prompt that that guy called in. I can't recite it. I don't remember, but I remember seeing here like I have questions about pronouns and stuff, and it's like okay, 
Like it's, again, we will explain grammar to you that day. We will explain biology to you this day. Tomorrow, call in. We'll talk about math. It'll be great. We'll get through. We'll do, we'll cover all the R's for you: reading, writing, and arithmetic. Yeah, oh and are man! We to, are we supposed to wait till some point later to read super chats and such? Yeah, I think we usually wait to the end of the show, or at least I do. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, I've got. Uh, yeah, that was just just sad and weird. Sad and weird. Um, but uh, boy, we've got more. Um, we've got, uh, hopefully this will be a, a more fun one because we've got, uh, Marie or maybe Mary, I don't know. Hopefully she'll tell me calling in from, uh, I, I, isotope lingering getting worse. <laughs> uh, who's a theist who is calling, uh, to, to says uh, that she is really passionate about evolution. Um, and wants to connect on, uh, uh, uh has questions about whether theistic science is a viable thing. I've got a lot to say about this, and I'm really excited to hear what she has to say. Uh, hello, you're on Skep Talk. Is it Marie or Mary? Let me know, and then also hi. Hi, um, it's Marie. Can you hear me? Marie! Yes! Okay, cool. Um, sorry, I don't, I don't know where to start. Um, okay. So, you're just I'm fine. a sophomore. I'm a sophomore in high school, and I, mm. I was in biology last year, and I learned about evolution and stuff, and before that, um, evolution was kind of a taboo topic <laughs> in my house that we didn't really talk about. Mm. My parents believe that the Earth is like 6,000 years old, and like we um, are have always been human and all that stuff, which I don't personally believe in, but I do believe in God, like the Christian God specifically. So, uh -huh. I, I don't know. I really, I think, I think that science is really interesting, and I would love to pursue it in the future, but I don't think that there's... I've been looking for reasons <laughs> that the two could connect, and I, I don't, I'm struggling to find any. So I was curious to know yeah. what you two thought. Yeah, well, you're probably sure. not curious um, to hear from me. I'll let, I'll let uh, him give the more eloquent, <laughs> polite answer. I'll, I'll be nice. Um, yeah, so, so uh, just, just for context, Marie, you know, we're, we're, we're atheist activists, and, and we, we argue with yeah. people about God all the time. And so, like, yeah, it's, that's, that's the whole thing. But, like, honestly, they're, they're you know, I, I think it's it's very commendable what, what you're starting with here. Um and uh I'll I'll get to where I'll be, you know, probably more rude in a minute, but like uh, about it, but not to you, because I think you're doing a great job asking these questions. Um so here's the thing. Uh there are people who believe in what's called theistic evolution, which is the idea that evolution happened exactly how we can see it happened, uh, the, as exactly how the evidence shows us. Um because again, you know, in case you haven't heard us explain it, evolution is not a guess or a hypothesis or just some wild idea. It's something that we have huge amounts of evidence for, not only in the fossil record, but in the genetic record and the geologic uh, uh, you know, timeline. We have you know, uh, homology and embryology and all sorts of different things that all point to evolution and show us that it happened. Yeah, that's, so there's a lot um, of that's what there. my teacher opened with. Yeah, yeah. And so like, there's a lot of people out there that are theists that cannot escape that evidence anymore. You know, there's a lot of people out there that are creationists that, that, that like just either ignore that evidence or they misrepresent that evidence or they, they, you know, try to come up with weird comments like the last person that just called in. Well, I can't fuck a monkey. Therefore evolution isn't real. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's all these weird things, but, um, the, the, there's a lot of people out there that are theists that realize that the evidence is overwhelming. And just like with any other scientific theory, be it cell theory, plate tectonic theory, uh, germ theory, uh, heliocentric theory, you name it, that this is very clearly the reality of the universe that we live in. Um, and so they use what's called theistic evolution, which is the idea that evolution happened, but God was in charge of it. The same way that, that God is in charge of whatever daily late life thing you pray to find your keys in the morning and you do when you thank God for it, or, or whatever else it is, or you put, putting in that kind of blanket statement of, oh, God has a plan, and the plan was for dinosaurs to evolve over hundreds of millions of years and then all die for no goddamn reason and then humans will do it too and and, and the permian with like 99 percent of all life on earth died that was part of the plan too and all the just just kind of putting that statement over it there's also um deist yeah, the reason your kid beliefs. died of leukemia was part of god's plan yeah, it was all part of the same plan that made the asteroid kill the dinosaurs and then there's deism which is uh the idea that like god started up the universe in such a way that it would do all this stuff by itself. 
So God got things started, isn't currently active in the universe, hasn't been active in the universe, but started it up in such a way that this was the result. Um, so those are like two ways in which some theists grapple with, with uh, evolution um, and other realities like the age of the earth and things like this. Um, is it, however, there's another way to look at it too. I mean, creationists are the only ones that try to put limitations on what God can do. That God can do anything, yeah. right? So they, they, that's what they say. If, if they were to win the lottery, they would say that they would say thank God because God arranged that they won the lottery. A thing that was designed to be as random as anything possibly can be, but even being completely yeah. random by design, which is neat, random by design, they would still yeah. say that it was God that did it. However, they will not allow, they, or they will allow that, that God can, ar can arrange for all these little intricate uh, interactions that all these different people have over centuries of, of grandchildren mm -hmm. and grandparents and, and you're interacting with all the people in their communities to ultimately get to something that he prophesied a thousand years ago because he knew how everyone was going to interact through all of these millions of interactions to get to this ultimate point that we can't avoid because he prophesied it. But for whatever reason, he can't allow for evolution, which would be inevitable given the, the few simple rules that our biology is based on. You create organisms like this, they're going to evolve. And they're going to evolve more the more time you get them. The more you give them a lot of time, they're going to evolve a lot. Right? Yeah. So there are... There are people like uh, Kenneth Miller, who was the star witness in Kitz Miller versus Dover. I had a chance to do an interview with him. He said he was a fan of mine, which I'm hugely proud about. He's a traditional Catholic. Uh, I did an interview with Robert T. Bacher, who was a, uh, a he's a Pentecostal preacher, but he's also got two Harv two Ivy League degrees as a paleontologist, and he was one of the uh, one, one of the the references for uh, the original Jurassic Park movie. So. Um, and, and there was there's a handful of, of some of the, the greatest advocates and champions and pioneers of evolutionary theory have been or still are Christians. So I acknowledge that they're not trying to defend biblical literalism. That's the whole big thing. So that's right. what I usually concentrated on my, in my videos. I'm talking about people who insist that Aesop's fables have to be true, despite the fact that it's got talking animals and magic spells. Right. The, the, right. When, you, when I'm talking to anyway, a theistic they, they, evolutionist, they have a much more reasoned position, and their faith is not nearly so fragile. Right. So there, there's a lot more than we can say about it, and, and I'd like to touch a little bit more on why I think that theistic evolution and deism and those things are not reasonable. But before we move any further, you just heard us talk a lot. Marie, does that answer your question, or did you have something you wanted to follow up with? Um, sorry, it's a lot to take in at once. Um. <laughs> yeah, we're very long-winded. We're very long-winded. Never mind. Uh, yeah, I think all of that makes sense. Cool. Um, so the biggest thing now, and I want to like impress upon you, is that like the the issue that I have with it, it with these things, because I've I've worked for scientists that were also religious people, um, and I know some people who are you know do the whole theistic evolution thing. The issue that I have with it, and that I I would you know, hope to press upon you to, to maybe keep in mind as you're grappling with this yourself, is that in order to think that way, you have to have a different kind of thinking for evolution than you do for literally everything else. And that's not unique to this. That's, that's the way that I feel about any, any scientist who also is religious, is that you necessarily have to use scientific thinking which is to say, you know, the same kind of logic and reasoning that you would use for anything else forever in your life. Um, you have to use special magical thinking for religion, and you have to use a, a different kind of thinking than the science you're doing for this one particular kind of science. So I understand you're, you, you called in saying that you're a theist, and, and you were talking about how this is something you're working with right now. Um, I would just I would encourage you to kind of not fall into that trap that I see and, and criticize what I'm saying. Think about what I'm saying. Don't just take it at face value. But like, I would encourage yeah. you to, to not fall into that trap of using a different kind of thinking for science than you do for other things, especially just one particular kind of science. Because a lot of the times when somebody is coming from a theistic background and they learn about something like evolution and this challenges their faith, they're then going to sit, you know, use some magic to fill in the gaps. And what I hope you'll do is, is not, not allow that kind of thinking in and just try to stick to stuff that you have evidence for. And if there's something you don't know and something that doesn't make any sense, 
ask questions about it. And if you don't have an answer, then say, okay, this either this isn't true or I just don't know it enough and keep studying, keep asking questions. Don't fill in any gaps with magic um, because that is a dead end. It's, it's, it's a thought stopper. Um, and I always encourage people to think more. Yeah, what a lot of people do with the theistic evolution is they understand the science. They don't really think too much about the God part. It's kind of like compartmentalized. Yeah. Uh, it, there are theological problems. There are philosophical problems with, with the God belief. But the way that theistic evolutionists apply the science, they simply don't involve God in it. Uh, they, God becomes the script writer. Everything happens the way God wanted the story to play out. So there's also issues with, you know, how did uh, free will come? Well, obviously, we don't have any if he wrote out what we're going to do before we do it. Yeah, and then okay. there's, um, there's the uh, Epicurus uh, trilemma that really bothers me. The what? Yeah, that's, that's one of them. Yeah, the like, um, either God is not all powerful or God is not all good, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, yes, yes, Epicurus. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yep. Um, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's a big one. And it's one that we bring up on this show a lot. Um, is it, you know, we, we have a lot of people call in and they try to defend, you know, if they try to defend the God of the Bible, then we just pull out any one of the countless parts of the Bible that are freaking awful. And then we either have to say, okay, well, that isn't real, or he didn't mean it, or it's poetic, or actually slavery was a good thing because he seemed to be into it at the time or whatever else. And, and like we have, you got to either come up with something that is logically faulty or just a flat out lie or fucking evil. And like, those are your options. And when it, when they don't want to talk about the Bible specifically, we got to talk about the world around us. Why is it that to this day, you know, like millions of kids die every single day from hunger, 24 to 30,000 children a day on average starve to death before they reach the age of five in this world every single fucking day. So either that's a good thing because it's part of the plan or God can't stop it. Or there's something else at play. One we get a lot is like, oh, well, that's Satan. It's like, okay, if the next door neighbor was hurting my children, I'd stop him. Why, 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 why? Wait, either Satan's more powerful or again, God doesn't care. So like, yeah, oh, it, it's, there's a lot Satan. there. God created exactly. Satan. He has to play both sides of the chessboard. He has to, he has yes. to harden Pharaoh's heart, right? He has, he has huh? to sometimes step on the other side of the game to, to, to mess things up just to keep the game going unnecessarily. Mm -hmm. there, there's one of the parts in the Bible where God is. tells Satan to go do bad stuff, like the whole the Job thing. Like Jesus yeah. Christ. Um, Job. So, like, yeah, there's there's a lot there, and, and and you know, if if you'd like, we we would be more than happy to be a resource for you. If you want to, either now or if you want to call back in another time, whenever R and I are on, or, or or anybody else really. Um, if there's ever like something you want to hash out about this, uh, we're not. We don't do this show just because we want to pick on Christians or whoever. Um, the people on this <laughs> channel, uh, we, we genuinely, or I, I can speak for myself at least, I genuinely believe that religion is harmful to people. And so uh, I also, I'm, yeah, so like we're, we're not just here to, to get views. We're, we're, we really do believe in what we're doing. And, and it's, it's to try to draw attention to the fact that this is a really crappy thing. That it, and, and it really, if we're being honest, a very abusive thing religion that's being passed on to, to these gener new generations and so Somebody asked me today. Um, go ahead i'm sorry yeah i, I was just going to encourage marie if, if you ever if you have any other questions about god or about anything like that that we can help with there is no reason for you to just accept whatever we're saying right now but at the very least we can like maybe give you some new ideas or some new thoughts that haven't you've not been exposed to yet in, in whatever situation you're in um, cause that's very common, especially in religious places. They try to control what information and what ideas you're exposed to. So we might be able to give you some new perspectives and if you don't like them, that's cool. You can tell us to fuck ourselves and we probably will, but like you can, you can just, you know, listen to what we have to say and, 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 and ask whatever questions you'd like. Um, I, okay. So there's a few different ones. Um, yeah. okay. So I, I live in, um, Part of my language, but uh, but talk nowhere, um, the middle of nowhere. Oh, uh, there's like three cornfields within walking distance of my yeah. home, um, and there are even more churches. And my entire life, mm -hmm. I've been very like devout and religious, um, because that's kind of just like what you do. So mm -hmm. I don't, I if I I don't know a life without religion. Like I don't know, 
I don't know an existence where God isn't an ever looming thing. So I don't, yeah. I don't know how to do that. And also, um, sure. there's, there's just, there's a lot of things that I just, I'm realizing that I don't know about the world. Um, like I, this is really embarrassing, but I like, I just found out that Methuselah wasn't real. Like my entire life. I thought that there was like this guy from forever ago who lived to be 900. And I thought that was just like objectively true, but it's not like that. That's not a thing yeah. that happened. So I've just been like, um, okay. Since yeah. then. <laughs> and, historians, like, have, I, uh, historians have, have recently given up on the idea of Moses too. Uh, well, I say recently, really? but it, it, predominantly, the, the better word is to say predominantly, historians have given up on Moses. Yeah. What? Yeah, it's, yeah, 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 there's a lot. And then that's the thing, man. It's, it's like with the, the, the flood, like uh, Noah's Ark and all these things. There's plenty of pseudoscientists out there that will tell you that like, oh, they found the Ark. The amount of times they found the goddamn Ark, it, you'd, you'd think they would have something. But they, and it continues to come up as nonsense. Um, or like the flood, they're like, oh, we found more evidence of the flood. What? It, the Grand Canyon or something that makes no goddamn sense. Um, it, it's, these things they rely on. Um, they rely on spreading false information that they hope you're not going to look at. Uh, I, I have a series on my channel uh, um, here on the YouTube's uh, called Reacteria, where I react to creationist videos. And there's a really fun series that I react to called John and Jane Debunk Evolution. And it's, it's two kids that look to be about high school age reading their high school biology book and being like, look, it, it says that random chance and mutations make evolution happen. But how can random chances make an eyeball? I guess Jesus is real. And like, that's the whole video. And like that, that that's the thing is when you talk about this stuff, you, you have no reason to be embarrassed or, or, or surprised that you're just now learning about these things, the purpose of the church, like a huge part of the function of this religion is to spread misinformation. Um, and that's not to say all religions do that. There's, like I said, there's some religious people that are very well educated. But a lot of the time, especially in small town America, having grown up in small town America myself, um, they get by by just spreading some nonsense and hoping nobody fact checks it. Or they, you know, use videos and, and materials and things that are made by people of their faith for people of their faith to teach the children. Um, so that the children and, and they they make sure to put stuff in the Bible about how you need to believe unquestioningly, you know, with with childlike belief and things like that. Um, the, the lean not on your own understanding, only trust in God. Don't you know those who call themselves wise are actually few fools, and that that you know all these things that train you to be anti-intellectual and train you to distrust experts and your own mind in in exchange for whatever the person with the collar on is telling you to believe um and that's really one of the most insidious parts of this whole thing is that it, if if we were to destroy every science textbook today and kill all the scientists and completely start over we would discover the same law of gravity tomorrow we would discover the same laws of physics. We would discover the same laws of evolution. We would discover the same laws of chemistry because the universe is the same. But if we got rid of all religion, tomorrow we'd have new religion. Th there's no way that we'd be able to make the same convoluted bullshit that, that we have. Um, and a great example of that is the history of even your religion <laughs> is the amount of times that it's changed and been reinterpreted and reimagined. Next time you go pull down your Bible, check out what version of the in our unchanging word of God it is. 50 different versions. There's 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 like 2000 different denominations of Christianity alone. Half of them think the other half are going to hell. So like um yeah, don't don't feel bad about that, dude. I think it was Bertrand Russell uh who said that if even if we could be sure that one religion was right, every believer should expect damnation out of probability alone because it's just there's so many choices that make no goddamn sense next to each other. Um meanwhile, Science is not a belief system. Science is not something like we go down, we want to know something, so we go pull down the big book of science and open it up and look at it. Science is just a methodology. It's a way that we learn about the world by, by testing things. Um, a better way to explain and, it. And, yeah, I think please. a better way to explain it is you, you have a belief system and then you have an investigation. 
And so science operates yes. as an investigation. So that's that's the best way to look at it. So you're weighing out different hypotheses yeah. and you're considering that, hey, either one of these might be true or maybe not. Mm -hmm. Right. And you can objectively analyze, well, if this one's true, let's test for this. If this one's true, then let's test for that. And we'll figure out which mm -hmm. one is supported. That's that's one way to look at it. And, the, and science doesn't prove things. It just deals yes. with what is supported versus what is not supported and whatever is not supported by the evidence doesn't warrant further discussion. You never accept a hypothesis, Marie. You fail to reject it. That's like the the first thing they teach you in any like 1000 level freshman level college uh, science degree the first lesson you never accept a hypothesis you fail to reject it. you only move forward with an idea when you can no longer prove yourself wrong um i want to yeah, I, I have one other thing but we've been talking for a long time so i'm gonna let you go next okay go ahead oh i, I was just gonna say you can't imagine life without a god was the other thing you said and i wanted to touch on that um and then I promise I'll shut up for a minute. Uh, is uh, uh, try it, Tr like, give it a shot. Because like the one of the things we talk about a lot on this show is um, why does religion exist? And one question we get asked all the time is like, is there a, like an evolutionary reason for religion, of a psychological reason, or whatever like that? And we can talk about evolutionary stuff because there is some good reasons. But like for for, for supernatural thinking. Um, but the major thing in the modern world today is what's called terror management. Um, terror management theory is centered around the idea that like life is scary. And so we invent things to help us feel a little bit less scared. One of the scariest things is death. So we invent, you know, uh, uh, afterlives and things like that to deal with that. But the biggest thing, the most scary thing is the fact that there's nobody in charge. The idea that actually you could die at any moment and it means nothing in the Andromeda galaxy. It just happens. And like th that, that there is nobody pulling the levers. There is no plan. We're just here and, and we're not going to be forever. And yeah, there's a lot of random chance that happens in the universe because that's just the way it is. And there's nobody dictating anything. Nobody's keeping track of anything. There is no you know, perfect justice. That it's just we're just here and we're doing the best we can. That's a very scary thing. To, to, to suddenly wake up and realize you're flying down the highway and nobody's holding the wheel. Um, that's, that's pretty freaky. And so we invent gods and, and, and you know, angels and demons and all these things because even believing that the devil's in control and that there's a demon possessing somebody and that there's aliens controlling the world, these shapeshifters that are shadow government, all these crazy, horrible things, that's a lot less scary than we're fucked. And, and so like, the 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 whole thing you know we talk about it's, it's difficult to imagine a god um that's a very long conversation if you want to have it but i would just encourage you to give it a shot and just kind of start start small and think about okay i made breakfast today and i went to school today and i tried the best that i could today to learn some cool stuff and that was all me and i did it and i've accomplished things and i can be proud of my accomplishments and i can be humble in my failings and nobody's watching and i'm allowed to do whatever the fuck i want to do and i'm going to try to do good things and because that's i think probably the best option for me i had and the just opposite sit with that experience. And see how that makes you feel i had the opposite of experience to hers i couldn't make sense of god i just couldn't make the universe yeah. make sense while trying to squeeze a god into it and it was when i eventually that realized that, that, yeah eventually when my when my religious beliefs collapsed is when i realized that uh, the reason that it doesn't fit with a god is because God doesn't belong here. And nothing made sense until I stopped trying to squeeze a God into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, those are all some things, but like I said, we've been talking for a long time. So like, if you have any other things you want to uh, throw at us, I'm, I'm happy to hear them. Yeah. Um, I don't want to take up too much time. So if it's, uh, um, too long, that's okay. But, um, I have you're, a you're just few fine. questions. You got a little bit longer. Okay. So, one of okay so i've been thinking about like theism and god for a while and one of the things that i can't like shake i guess is this idea that like there is no i don't know how to describe it uh without sounding stupid um there's no it doesn't make it. sense to me <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me 
that there is any kind of like it doesn't make sense to me that religion has been around for so long if there's not some truth to it. Like, well, that's a good question. That's a good question. Yeah. I've, yeah. I got an yeah, answer. That's really like. good. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 before I you do, I just want to say, don't ever, don't ever be worried about asking a stupid question. The only stupid question is a question you didn't ask. So ask whatever. Aaron, you go first, and then I got something too. Yeah, well, there's a lot of things that, that prompt people to think that there's a, you know a god watching them. We, because we are a social animal, we think that we 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 realize because of social norms that just because we think no one can see us doesn't mean no one can see us. So you've got to be careful that what you do when you think it's secret that nobody didn't see that. So having that having that awareness already kind of prompts us to thinking that that somebody's always watching us anyway even if there isn't anybody that even if there isn't any other human there somebody can see everything you do and somebody's terribly interested in everything you because you're the most you're the, the person that you are the most interested in you're going to think that other people watching are going to be very interested in you too and maybe they can even read your mind and because this is the, the natural progression if they're watching everything that you do then they can read your mind and i'm, I'm doing the super summarized version of this but people get this impression that somebody's always watching over them, that somebody can hear them, that somebody can hear what they're thinking, that sort of thing. This, this leads into a God. But now when you get to a structure of a, of, a, of a belief system, now you've got something else going on where you have commands to kill the unbeliever on the word of two or three witnesses. Now, mm -hmm. looking at population mechanics, how, how do you think that works? That if you have an unbeliever, the unbeliever is immediately attacked, ostracized, killed. Shut up. Somebody had to come to my door, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so we, you, you have these political systems. If, if you say that you're a believer, you know, you're going to get a little bit of sympathy. People are going to try to reason with you, maybe. Right? But if you say that you're an unbeliever... You you can you can walk up as a believer. You can walk up to people's children, and they're going to tell them that you're going to they're going to burn in hell because they're sinners. And we still give you more more uh, courtesy than you would give us if we walk up to your kids and say, "Look, there is no there is no God. There is no hell. Live your lives the way you're supposed to. You know, it's okay." Suddenly, we're treated as evil for that. So you have this cultural structure that's that's set up on on ostracizing the people, the unbelievers, kill the infidel. It's a common trope. In all the major religions, Judaism, Islam, Christianity, kill the infidel. That's how you get a religion to stay around for thousands of years. Yeah, I, I would say, you know, that when I was, uh, I was never really like super religious, but I, I was like half-assed, weird, spiritual. Um, uh, my mom was pagan. My dad was Catholic. My grandma was like some sort of Buddhist. I don't know how any of this happened. Um, but anyway, I, I yeah. had like the same kind of vibe though, where I had like this whole, like, well, all these religions all have some sort of string to them. That's sort of true. And like, they're all Gandhi said that all religions are beautiful flowers in the same garden. And that's, that's, that's the thing is that the garden's really what matters and different flowers are different, whatever. Um, and that changed when I started applying the same rules of logic and morality to my religious and spiritual beliefs that I did to literally any other thing ever. Um, and so what I noticed was there are some, some threads in religion that make sense because religion started out. So the word philosophy um, used to be synonymous with the word science back in the day. If you were a philosopher, it meant you were a scientist and someone who just thought about stuff in general and just a deep thinker. It was, a, it meant intellectual. And then we kind of split those fields when it came apparent that asking what does it mean to be a person is different than actually classifying a human as, a, as an animal. And so there's a different endeavors. And so like they, that they, we kind of split this way. And it was the same thing. Religion used to be the same thing as philosophy and the same thing as science as well. And so when we look through a lot of like religious books, um, we find a lot of early attempts to explain the universe around us. Genesis in the Bible is an account of the creation of the world. And whether you want to take it as poetic or as literal, different people on different sides of that, the point was to try to explain some things. Um, and so there's parts that in the Bible that attempt math. They, they, they talk about uh, the, the, uh, the Bible calculates pi 
at one point. Um, they're talking about, I think it's building Solomon's temple and they build like this pool um, and they explain the, the circumference and the diameter of the pool. And if you calculate, it comes out to three. Not great, but pretty fucking good for Iron Age dudes. You know what I mean? Like that's for 2000 years ago. That's dope. Not bad. Um, it's, it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, and, and, you know, uh, uh, there's a reason why algorithm and algebra are Arabic words. Most of the stars in the sky have Arabic names because Islam really focused on science. A lot of math and a lot of astronomy came out of Islamic cultures. Um, I they want to say that it wasn't say, Islam. It was Arabic culture, was the, but not, not specifically yes. Islam. Yeah. Yes, that, that is a good point. Also, I was going to say, I was going to follow that up by saying, also in the Quran, it says that like sperm is made in your spine. But whatever. Yeah, it's fine. There's some <laughs> stuff in there that's wrong. But like, it's fine. Um, but like the whole point is that like you know the the you know religion was an early attempt to explain the universe and because it was one of our first attempts it was also one of our worst um the key to science is that science is always progressing there was a time when the best scientists in the world didn't understand that what plate tectonics was we thought that the earth was expanding like a balloon and then we were like, actually, it turns out the evidence is strongly pointing towards plate tectonics. And we had a big fight about whether or not we should be putting plate tectonics in public schools and argued about it and like whether or not it's a valid theory and all these things. By the way, that was in the 1960s. That was, that was a little like, you know, 60 or so years ago that we were having this argument about plate fucking tectonics. Um, I can tell you from personal now, experience, being 60 years old, I was in kindergarten <laughs> and my teachers we're telling me how there's this controversial theory. <laughs> yeah. And so Wait, like, that's, yeah. that's, the, that's the, yeah, that's the best part about science is that we're always learning new stuff. I was a kid when Pluto was a planet and then we were like, okay, we got new data in and it turns out that the diameter of Australia is bigger than the diameter of Pluto. We probably shouldn't be calling this a planet anymore. And we changed it. Um, and that's, that's what science does, is that science corrects itself and it gets better over time. Religion doesn't. Religion says, believe the dogma or you burn forever. Um, science is where we start with the evidence and we figure out what answer we can draw from that. Religion is where we start with the answer we want and we try to find some evidence that supports it and we dismiss evidence that we don't. Um, and it's all about controlling and, people too. Believe what I said simply well, because I said so and do as I said yes. because I said so and give me 10% of your yeah. income and give me alone time with your children. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like, this is the biggest thing when it, when it comes right down to it, the, the thing you were talking about is religion has been around for a long time. This is kind of why, because science, I won't even say science because I don't want to make it sound adversarial between science and religion. I'm just going to say thinking, thinking about the world around you and actually going out and looking for a reason to believe the things you believe. That's it's hard work. Um, it is is really difficult. It, and, and when we're talking about religion, it is as simple as let go and let God. Um, and so it's easy to do. And that's a good explanation for why religion persists today. People teach it to their children. They teach their children not to question it. And they teach it that it's a lot more easy. You know, there, there's a lot more anxiety amongst the atheist community because it's more difficult to think this way. Um, the historical reason why it's been around for as long as it has been is what Aaron touched on, is that we, and this is not a controversial opinion. This is not me saying this. You can very easily go check any old history book and see the multi-thousand year history of the major religions we see today burning a crusade across the world and finding an indigenous culture. The reason why, you know, we're a Christian nation here in America is because we came here yeah, and we told yeah. everybody who was already living here, either convert to what we're saying or die. And we enslaved people, forced them to believe and killed the ones that didn't believe it. Um, and we've done that all around the world. And, and I say we, I mean, particularly Europeans, but like we can say Christians, Muslims have done the same thing. Like, uh, it, Hindus, there have been Buddhist terrorists. Like it's, it, it, there's been people all, from all different faiths that have gone all around the world, found people who didn't believe what they believed, and said, join or die. Um, and that's been the history of the past 2,000 or so years, especially. Um, so this is something that was spread by fire. Uh, and then once it got a foothold in, 
it became a cultural thing. You're only a good person if you believe in God. If you don't believe in God, where do you get your morals from? How can you be, you know, what's your moral compass without the Bible? How can you be whatever? Um, there has to be some justice in the world. There has to, well, they, they, it's, 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 we can talk about you know, the, the beginning of the religion, terror management theory, evolutionary implications of believing that there is an actor for everything. There's you know, the, the historical reasons, genocide, torture, enslavement, crusades, spreading religion by the sword, and now the modern reasons, which are convenience and cultural stigma. Um, yes, it has been a long, a long time, and yes, there are some things that are good in it. Pretty much every religion has something in it that says, treat others how you would want to be treated yourself. And that's pretty cool, I guess. Um, the key that I want you to notice is that there is not a single thing in religion that you cannot get, or I should say, not a single good thing about religion that you <laughs> cannot get secularly. However, there's a whole hell of a lot of bad things about religion that you would never get secularly. You would never get through just rational thought and, and, and without uh, God telling you to do it. Um, the KKK is a strictly religious organization. Al-Qaeda is a religious organization. Uh, the, the genital mutilation crowd is a religious thing. You know, there's, there's a lot there um, that is strictly religious. And while there have been evil atheists in the world, Mao and Stalin were bad dudes and they didn't believe in God. There is yet to be evil atheism in the world. Ah, in a normal world. I will myself up in the name of no one in particular. <laughs> yes. In order to prove that there's nothing, I'll do something insane. What? Um, so yeah, that's, that's the biggest thing is that like uh, when, when in a normal world, in a normal universe, good people do good things and bad people do bad things. But if you want to get a good person to do bad things, all it takes is religion. And when, when religious people are good and progressive and change the world for the better, I, I think by and large, they're doing that in spite of their religious belief, not because of it. Uh, and I can give a million examples of that, but I've been talking for a very long time. And I want to hear and, what and, and when they do that, they're also opposed by their own faction. Yes, yes. It's very much in, in, you know, against what they've been taught as a kid. Anyway, religious what, what do you think about what we've said? Do you have any... Progress? In every application, it, is, it has retarded, impeded, or reversed progress in every application it has mm -hmm. ever touched. So what do you think about what we've said? Like, it, did, did we say anything that didn't make sense or you want to ask more questions about, or do you have a different thing you want to ask? I, I think it makes sense. It's... Sorry, I'm thinking. Um... <laughs> It's okay. And, and you, so, we, we just talked to you for like 20 fucking minutes, dude. Take your time. <laughs> <laughs> um, something you said towards the end, uh, I'm a little iffy about. Um, sure. So my, uh, sorry, this is a little anecdotal, which I know is not evidence, but whatever. Um, well, if so you're telling a story, my, you're telling a story. It's okay. Yeah, my little sister is a lot more religious than I am, and we've both been through some stuff, like the foster care system and such. And mm -hmm. I, what like got her through all of that is a belief in something bigger and better that could help. And I never personally believed that because my stance on it was always, well, if there's something bigger, then why isn't it doing something? But at the same time, I I firmly believe that the reason that she was able to like get through everything that she did and process the things that she did is because she had this hope in something bigger than herself. And I don't think that mm -hmm. that's necessarily a bad thing. Like, sure. obviously religion has had a lot of like really awful repercussions in the world, but I do think there are people who get a lot of good out of it. Like people who improve themselves based on it or people who like are able to extrapolate upon it to become yeah better people so that, that's I won't great argue, yeah. right I, at the risk of being indelicate i won't argue that a crutch doesn't serve a purpose but you don't always need that crutch mm. that yeah sense. that that's the biggest thing is that, like it's what, what i said at the end that that i'll, I'll reiterate and, and say a little bit better is what well, is it like the the there is nothing good that religion gives you that you can't get without it um, and so like, you know, so, someone that literally, as you're saying this, I saw someone in the chat here, um, said Dumbo's magic feather. It, it's the same thing. It, sometimes people have something made up 
to hold on to that gives them the hope and the confidence they need to succeed in a way that they would have been able to succeed otherwise. Um, and this is there, there's two things I think are really important here. Number one is that actually three three things. I'll be brief about them. I promise. Um, the first thing is I'm really glad that your sister had that to hold on to um, because that hope is important to survive. Um, however, there are other m- ways to get that. There are plenty of other, I have plenty of hope in my life and I haven't believed in a God for a long time. Um, and my hope comes from action. And it, there, there, there is some blind hope sometimes where I'm like, man, I just really freaking hope things get better. Um, this really sucks. And I hope these people are okay. I don't know the future, but in terms of like stuff that I'm trying to get through, I, I have confidence in myself. I have confidence in my friends. I have confidence in my family. I have confidence in my abilities. I have confidence. I know people. I, I, I can, I, I, I don't think that the kind of hope that religion gives is actually a good thing. I think that hope is a prison because it teaches you to be inactive. And like I said, just let go and let God. Um, and sometimes there is nothing you can do, but a lot of times there are. And so in that kind of situation, I don't know what it's like to be a foster kid, but I do know what it's like to be a very sad and abused child. <laughs> and I can tell you that like, oh, I didn't God, have any I'm religious. Fine. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, it happens. Uh, I, I can tell you that like, I didn't have any religious hope there. All I had was a hope for a better future and confidence in myself that I was going to be able to get through it and I was going to be better and I was going to use this to push me forward. And like this, I'm going to use this pain to become a better person someday. Maybe not all that's the most healthy, but it got me there. Um, and so like there, there are other ways to push yourself forward. And that's, that's the third thing I think is really important um, is that that level of hope, the, the, the good things that do come with religion are also tied onto a lot of baggage. And, and you mentioned, you know, there's a lot of bad stuff that comes with religion. You can't separate the two. And so like there, the, yeah you had this, this good feeling. There were other ways that she could have, I'm not blaming her for anything, but there are other I ways know, that she I'm, could have I'm had that good feeling. That right, I just want to be very clear. Um, there are other ways that she could have gotten that good feeling that didn't come with the baggage of religious trauma, where now, okay, awesome, she was able to get through a really shitty situation, but also, I'm just going to ex- assume here, probably has some purity culture mixed in there and probably yeah. has some real like unhealthy views of like sexuality and maybe her own uh, personhood probably has some really bad beliefs and arguments about like other cultures and other people because of the way that her religion has framed them probably yeah has, we both got uh, hit with the um napkin metaphor sorry go on yeah, so like there's a lot there. And so like there's a lot of bad shit that came along with it that she's now going to need a different hope and a different healing mechanism to get out of that. And so it's like, you know, it, it, you see somebody in a hole, so you give them a ladder, but you also punch them a, a few times and they come up like is that really better? Um and so that's that's the whole thing here is that like I I would challenge you to just check like is a belief true? or more likely to be true if it has some utility. Um, and, and, and does it, is that utility good enough, even if you can agree that it's not true, is that utility good enough to excuse all the negativity, especially when you can get that same utility elsewhere? I think in terms of your sister and in terms of, we get people who call in all the time and say like, I'm grieving and I don't know how I'll get by without God. Or like, you know, I lost my dad. I don't know how I get... Um, I'm, I'm scared of going to the military. I'm, I'm frightened. I got diagnosed with cancer. I, I don't know what to do next. And I need this God. What's happened in those situations is that these people have been robbed of the ability or the opportunity to develop their own healthy coping mechanisms. And religion has filled in this gap where it shouldn't have been allowed. And now they lack the, you know, the, the, I, I don't want to use the word strength because I don't want to sound like I'm belittling this but like they, they lack the the ability to handle this shit on their own or, or 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 in a in a more progressive and productive way um that's something that religion has taken from them so like i said at the beginning i'm really glad that your sister had something to hold on to because no child should have to feel that scared and alone um i wish it was something better 
And I hope that as time goes on, maybe she'll be able to develop her own coping skills on her own that are separate from religion and be able to kind of separate those two and, and not be so reliant on it and, and, and heal in that way. As condescending as that may sound. No, it doesn't. Don't worry. Okay. Aaron, do you have anything you want to add yeah. to that? I I was just going to say we we've been on this call a, lo- a while. Yeah, I, I love it. Like we can, we can no, it's okay. You okay. we we have we have a few other callers. We'll get to here in a minute. I just want to make but sure. They're all like, <laughs> yeah, they're all atheists. They can fucking sit there and deal with it because I I want to like make sure that we're we're eating all your expectations. Because like Marie, th- like I said, this is this is what we do. This is what we care about the most, and so like. It, you know, we, we have been for a minute here, uh, and we'll have to wrap it up. But um, I want to know if you have any other like things that stick out in your head that you want to ask us about at this moment that we can be quick about. Um, and if not, or whether or not you do, I want to encourage you to, to, you know, if you have anything else later on, please, please don't hesitate to call us back. Yeah. Okay. So I only have one other, not really question, more of a request um, for either of you. Uh, do either of you have recommend? I love, I like reading. It's how I learn best. Um, so if either of you have recommendations on just like things to read, um, absorb into my brain, that would be much appreciated. Um, on the subject of biology or theism or otherwise. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Um, Aaron, you want to get started? I can go grab some, some atheist books, and I got a bunch of biology books in here too. I'll, I'll, I'll be right. Give me two seconds. For me, <clears throat> I found one of the, one of the interesting things was was reading Darwin, but not Origin of Species. What I found interesting was reading his first book before he ever formulated his theory on the voyage of the Beagle, and uh, his last book, where the, the, the on descent of man in eighteen seventy one. And in both of those, you get to see more of his humanity, and you also get to see where where he was coming from with it, the time period to understand where the rest of the world was. So you'll hear a lot of people thinking or saying things about the way that D- Darwin spoke or the things that he said, but you have to look at the context of what everyone else was saying at that time. And that he was actually a, a hugely progressive sort of a person. Uh, evolution doesn't really depend on him, as was mentioned before, if, uh, as, as Forrest mentioned, if we, Er- eradicated our civilization tomorrow, we would have different religions, but we would have the same science would, would come back. And just as Darwin had figured out uh, natural selection, so it did Alfred, Alfred Russell Wallace, pretty much at the same time, who was also a world traveler like Darwin was. And so he started noticing how the species are different, different continents and different things. And so he started, he started piecing together how this happens. So that's one recommendation. Only because, and I suggest this only because I find the history of science to be kind of interesting. And it, to, to see where the mindset was of these people back then, it's, it's good to read the period material to see where they were and, and what kind of people they were to see where we are now. Yeah, that's totally yeah, awesome. I, I, would that, I would second that a lot. Um, because like learning, learning the history of science is really good. Um, Darwin was a really progressive guy in a lot of ways. Also, uh, Descent of Man is some hot trash in, in a lot of other ways. Um, he had some very, he was like super duper like anti-slavery. Um, and he based that on his uh, understanding that all humans are related and we all share a common ancestor. Also had some pretty racist beliefs as well about like, but also white people are like the most advanced and like some weird stuff. Um, but well, to, that's to also be fair, I, I wrote some articles about this because I noticed in reading yeah. Descent of Man, he starts out that way. He's speaking the yeah. language of, that was ubiquitous throughout anthropology at the time. Don't, don't forget that's what that I was going to say. The that, that was very common at the time, yes. Yeah, the leading anthropologist at that time was Louis Agassiz, who said that God created mm-hmm. six species of people with the intent that they re- remain on different continents to remain separated. And the, the yes. father of um, taxonomy, um, Carolus Linnaeus, had a hundred years earlier said that there were four species of people. Right? And so what Darwin came on, Darwin starts out speaking the same way that they do in the beginning of Descent of Man, but yeah. you get to see an evolution of Darwin's thinking in the book. Yeah. 
that by the time you get to the end of the book, Darwin is flat out calling out all of the other anthropologists of his day to, to be the first person ever to say that there is only one human race. Yep. That's, that's one of the things like it's, it's, I, I don't, I don't want to relativize it and say, yes, they were very common beliefs. They were awful. But also, it is really important to point out that that was the leading scientific knowledge of the time, uh, and it was disproven because it's fucking dumb. Um, okay, so I got two books. I, I kind of looked around for a while, and I just thought about stuff that, like, you said you're a sophomore in high school, and so I, I didn't want to grab anything too crazy um, or, or too, like, super-duper specific. Um, so I grabbed two that I think are important, that I, I, I think are really good, and I liked a lot. Um, the first one is God is Not Great by Christopher Hitchens. Um, it's called God is not great. How religion poisons everything. Um, and Christopher Hitchens, you can actually look up a lot of clips and a lot of debates from him online. He died, uh, I think back in like 2012 or something like that. He died about 10 or 15 years ago. Um, but he was a really, really prolific journalist for a while. Um, and also towards the end of his career, especially became just like this really hot button atheist debater. Um, and a lot of people, said that he was just trying to be contrarian. He was just trying to look for a reason to say that everything's bad forever. But he actually makes some fantastic arguments about like why religion is not benign. It's not just, I'll, you know, you can believe whatever you want and it doesn't matter. Actually, this has been the cause of so many wars, so much suffering, so much misery, so many, like the, 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 the reason why we have such high rates of, of you know, a, a teen pregnancy and and circumcision and and uh, uh, God, you name uh, illiteracy and all sorts of other things in this. All pick your favorite. Um, we can point back to like religious society having weird religious rules that are you know like have all these problems. Um, he talks about uh, religion all over the world and its repercussions for individual people and for societies as a whole. It's a phenomenal book. Um, and there's an audio book online too, if you want to listen to it and it's him reading it. It's this ch- charming British dude. Um, other British dude that I will recommend. Uh, this is called, uh, the greatest show on earth by Richard Dawkins. Richard Dawkins is someone that I won't speak as highly of. <laughs> um, he is a very intelligent oh. and very prolific guy. He's an evolutionary biologist who's gotten very famous arguing religion. Um, and he does a good job of it. His arguments against religion by and large are pretty freaking solid. And I, I like what he has to say a lot of the times. Also recently became very transphobic using a lot of the arguments that he has spent his entire career arguing against. Very weird. But whatever. This book is good. And so it's called The Greatest Show on Earth. Um, and this, uh, this book is all about evolution, specifically about evidence for evolution. Um, and so like it, it goes over, it starts the, uh, uh, talking about what a theory is. Um, there's a lot of stuff I'm going to tell you right now in here that's kind of him bitching about how he has to explain this stuff in the oh. first place. So get get through that. But the rest of it, like they explain what he explains what macroevolution is. He explains you know evolution that we can see with our very eyes. He explains um uh uh um what do you call it uh, artificial selection. He explains you know what a missing link is and what it isn't. He explains vestigial structures. And so this book is just explaining like evidence for evolution. Would it be appropriate huh? for me to would it be appropriate for me to pitch my book? Yeah, yeah d- d- Aaron's got I a book. It. You can look that up if you like. <laughs> um, you what? What's your book called? Foundational falsehoods of creationism. There you go. And uh, while he's pitching his book, I'm going to be a uh, millennial, uh, and I'm going to pitch my YouTube series. Um, go to my channel, which I'll put this in the, uh, I'll put this in the chat right now. I've got a series called the light of evolution. It's four episodes long. Um, I'll put that in there right now. There you go. Um, it's, uh, uh, episode one is explaining like terms and like understanding like themes in evolution. Episode two is all about evidence for evolution. Episode three is all about mechanisms of evolution, how it actually works. And then episode four is about like the big picture, what it means to think in evolutionary terms and in, 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 in terms of biology and ecology. Um, so yeah, check that out too, if you'd like. It's called The Light of Evolution. It's four episodes, about you know 20 minutes-ish long a piece, 10 to 20 minutes. Not, not hard to watch. Yeah, totally. So uh, read all of those okay. books and watch all of those videos and then 
call us back. No, seriously, you call us back anytime. And if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, whatever, um, we're always going to be here to, 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 you know, yeah, my, my channel also, bad faith. My, my channel also has a bunch of, uh, you know, phylogeny videos, including one series you might find interesting, the systematic classification of life. It's a 50 part series that covers human evolution from basically microbes to man. Yeah. Oh, and that's another thing. Also, one last thing, and I, I'll, I'll let you go. Um, I love textbooks, dude. So I, I, I've I, been in, going to school for a long time. I can't stop. I have a problem. Um, but also, I just love picking up, like, textbooks from places. Um, there's these, uh, like, really, um, Costas Camporacus? Camporacus? I don't know. Understanding Evolution, this, like, little, little tome. Um, the, the company that makes these, uh, Cambridge, um, they make a lot of these, uh, and they've, I've got one over Evo Devo evolution of uh, evolutionary development. I've got one over human evolution. They make like a billion more over like random science topics. And they're just really short little pocketbooks you can carry around. Um, I also recommend, I, I have taught out of this book for a long time. And I was actually, it was my textbook in, uh, grad school. This is uh, Our Origins by Clark Spencer Larson. This is an undergraduate level anthropology textbook. We actually used it in grad school as an introduction to bioanth. And so like, it's, it's really, really cool. Um, so check that out uh, and uh, tune in next week and I'll spew more books at you. I, I would love that. Um, before I hang up, there's one thing. Um, which you can totally like never look into. However, something I do mm. think you'd find interesting. Um, because I, while we've been talking, I've been looking through both of your YouTube channels, and um, you want to talk about like about like creationism and why it's uh, you know bullshit. Um, yep. And something that I thought you might find interesting is when I went to Christian school a little while ago, I was in this club called JBQ, which is Junior Bible Quiz, um, <laughs> and Something that we had to read is something called um, The New Evidence That Demands a Verdict by Josh McDowell. And it's okay. it's a really long book. It's a really, really long book. It's um, essentially the grown-up version of A Case for Christ, which is the same thing, mm -hmm. but in a different font. Um, yep. And if you ever run out of uh, things to argue about, it's there's some pretty awful arguments, but there are some that are like so slightly okay. So... You know. <laughs> yes, yeah, somebody sent me. I actually I had a fan send me this. It's called "Understanding Evolution: What Every Christian Parent Should Know and Share with Their Family" uh, by W. A. Gerba, oh, exposing the fallacies of Darwinism through science. Um, and uh, I was hoping to make a video about it. It's it's not. It's in big font. Like I could probably crank through this in a day. Um, and it it is bad. <laughs> it's real bad. It's like yeah, I'm, yeah, I might start doing some book reviews from uh, time to time. Oh. Speaking of book reviews, check out also if you if you still want a couple of books. Uh, I, I, it's in the other room. I don't want to go grab right now. But um, a brief history of time by uh, uh, Stephen Hawking. It's very old now, but it's still freaking crazy, mind blowing. It's like all about astrophysics, space, everything. Um, if you want a shorter one, um, Astrophysics for People in a Hurry by Neil deGrasse Tyson. Super good book. Very short. Anybody can read it. Um, and also. Uh, Hit my microphone. Why evolution is true by Jerry Coyne. Uh, There's another one that's that's just really cool if you're interested in in just learning some basics about evolution. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Marie, for calling in and talking to us for a freaking hour. I, I'm sorry we took so long. Aaron and I are very long-winded people. But we really appreciate you listening to us, and we hope that uh, you'll go back and re-listen to some parts of this call later on and like kind of just re-grapple with what we're saying and. Call us back and tell us, you know, if you, if you have any other questions or if you hear something like, hey, this didn't make any sense. What, what did he mean by that? Call us back and tell us. Okay, I will. Thank you. Thank you, Marie. Have an awesome day. What a nice person. Uh, I do not apologize at all to anybody for taking as long as we've done on that call. That, that call is like the purpose of the show. And I know yeah, that day. Like, Huh. Somebody asked me today why I do this. I mean, it was a believer that was upset at me for a video that I posted last night. They said, if you're right, 
and you disabuse people of, of, of all these lies, as you put it, you know, what is to be gained? Like, what is to be gained? You know, I, I, I hear daily, and it, it's an average of one message per day for the last 10 years. I've been getting about a message a day from former believers thanking me for having walked them out of their former beliefs. They, they, yep. they generally report having a higher rate of curiosity. They, they appreciate life better. They, don't, they, don't, they are disabused of a lot of the prejudices that came with their religious belief because there's a lot of bigotry written into religion. And it's, it's wonderful when you come out of that and you let go of it and you become more curious and more tolerant and more liberal and, and just generally appreciate things better. You, you, you become more thoughtful. And a lot of these people have gone back to college, and some of them have reported to me that they went out and they got their degree because of something I did. If I wasn't oh. doing this for a living, if I was still like the first 10 years that I started doing this, so I was doing this while doing a full-time job as a single parent, you know, I would, mm -hmm. I would still be doing that because that's, that's the reward. That's the goal. I'm helping people. Yeah. And that, that, that's, I know exactly what you're talking about because I get, I get the same messages all the time. I get a bunch of emails from people saying that, like, the listening to me talk was a, a catalyst for them to go out and, you know, go back to school or to, to walk away from religion or whatever like that. And those people are giving me way more credit than I deserve. It's very touching. It's very meaningful, but I, I cannot wait to disappoint you because it's going to happen. Um, like, it's just, <laughs> but like, yes, the thing, man, is that like, we talked at the beginning of the show, um, that like you, we get a lot more views if we were dicks. If, if, if we, if we had taken a, a Christian caller, uh, if, you know, if, if, if somebody calls in and we get into a big knockdown drag out argument and we're blowing up about like, how dare you just say the oh, did you know, start screaming at people and muting people. Yeah. The clip will do really well. We'll probably make like 30 bucks. It'll be great. But at the end of the day, <laughs> calls like Marie are, are just my bread and butter, man. They make me so happy because like, that's, that's really what, what matters the most. Somebody is seeing the cracks and exploring those cracks and starting to find their way out. And, and I think that's really, really, really important. Um, so thank you all so much for tuning in and watching all that. Um, we have four other calls on the line at this moment. They're all atheists, so we'll get through them. Um, and I don't know if lines are open for theists. It looks like they still are. Uh, yes, they still are. So we'll, we'll, we've got four other atheists on the line. We'll talk to them. And if any theists call in the meantime, we'll, we'll go back to taking theist callers. Uh, right now, though, we've got, uh, I don't know about this one. I don't know about this one, dude. We've got uh, Jan, pronouns she, her, who says that paraphyletic groups are well-defined and useful and wants to argue that fact. We're about to have a fight, Jan. Uh, and this is going to yep. be real esoteric, and most people watching aren't going to know what the hell we're talking about. But here but we I, go, I suspect, Jan. I suspect the word uh, uh, the word fish and reptile and ape are going to come up in short order. It's going to come a lot. It's going to come up a lot. Uh, Jan, you're on the line. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing great, Forrest. Yeah, it's all right. So uh, please explain your wrong position and why you think it's right. And then we will help uh, disabuse you of how wrong you are. What, what do you think? Why, why are paraphyletic groups useful and well useful? I'll give you well defined. I won't. <laughs> what do you think? So for why they're well defined, I think uh, my argument is pretty simple. It's just that you're using two well defined terms to define the paraphyletic group. So you're just saying that you have a monophyletic group, but then I'm excluding this one monophyletic group that's inside this group for this definition. All right. So both of those right. terms are well-defined. I think it makes sense. Hold on. I'm going to explain to everybody what this is, because I know we got a lot of people in the chat that are like, what are we talking about? So here's a cladogram, everybody. Okay, this is the little thing, and we can say like you know humans, chimpanzees, gorillas, orangutan, what, whatever, you know, what, whatever the thing is, or it could be really, really big. It could be like you know, uh, uh, take uh, you know, whales over here and other artiodactyls over there, and then shrews over here. as big or as small let me, as you let me, want. Right? Let me help you with that one. Me, can I can I help you with that one? Put at the, I was just put the top what the groups mean. 
yeah, yeah. At the at the end of that, if you put man, and then in the first offshoot, if you put ape, and the second offshoot, you yeah. put monkey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then that, that would work, but, but it won't be useful. So I'll just say I'll just say a, b, c, and d are up here. Um, yeah. A monophyletic group for everybody watching. Okay, a monophyletic group is the common ancestor and all of the offspring. So. B, C, and D all together, excluding A, which doesn't, it does have a common ancestor, but that's not the one we're talking about. This common ancestor and all the offspring together, that's a monophyletic group, okay? That's what that means. There's also, let's do the same cladogram here. Okay, here's A and B and C and D again. Um, a polyphyletic group is these guys and these guys are together in a group. They don't share a common ancestor, and they're totally different groups, but we're lumping them all together to say that they're all one thing. So this one type of animal that aren't actually related in this way, but they, they do the same stuff, so we're lumping them all up. That's a polyphyletic group. I, a paraphyletic group yeah, I, is somewhere I in the middle. And polyphyletic group. I will also defend polyphyletic groups as useful, but not well defined by definition. Um, a paraphyletic group is somewhere in the middle where you're going to say it's the common ancestor again but not all the offspring so yeah. common ancestor of b c and d but not c though just b so and d the and the time. common ancestor and then this group broke off of the thing this is a so paraphyletic the, group and a, yeah go on for the for the longest time there was this classification that, 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 Careless Linnaeus said that he couldn't figure out a difference between humans and apes. He had to classify them together. This was in 1735 or 1741, somewhere in this period. He can't find the difference. So he's, he challenges the scientific community to find him a difference. And what they did instead, because they couldn't find a difference either, was they arbitrarily created two boxes, Homo and Pongo. And Pongo was, when I was a kid, Pongo was a legitimate clade. It was considered one. Or it wasn't a clade, it was a it was a taxon. So it's all the apes except people. So e even people that, that understood and accepted evolution would still say that we came from apes, but we were not apes. Because there's some there's some point you could be an ape and then stop being an ape when you become a human. Likewise, apes descended from something we would recognize as a monkey, but you stop being a monkey when you become an ape. Now, in a monophyletic classification, the monkey is a monkey. So New World monkeys, Old World monkeys, and, and, and the apes and the people, they're all monkeys. In the polyphyletic mm -hmm. group, is you have the ones that are trying to get out of admitting that we are monkeys. So they'll say the New World monkeys are separate from the Old World monkeys and that we evolve somewhere between them where we're not monkeys, which is just a bullshit excuse to try to get out of the obvious. That's all I wanted to throw that's, in about that's that. That's the breakdown. That's fine. That's the breakdown. That's everything. Um, now, Jan, you said that paraphyletic groups are well-defined and useful. I agree on useful, same way I agree with polyphyletic groups. I think para- and polyphyletic groups, by definition, aren't well-defined. And you said, yeah, but they're defined because you're using two well-defined things. But you're not, though. You're splitting a well-defined thing into one well-defined group with a poorly defined out group and i don't know why explain yourself how dare you come up in here and say these things to me what <laughs> explain yourself uh so i think the way that i would put it is that let's say reptile reptile is just a label that we use for um, non-bird thoropsids. And similarly, you could say that fish is a label that we use for um, non-tetrapod vertebrates. So I think yeah, we, if you put it in that, that way... See, uh, uh, Sir Richard Owen, back in the 1800s, had this idea about grades. And, uh, and, and people, that, when they started devising evolutionary theory, they started using the, the, the grades that he created, that you would start from a fish and you would become an amphibian and you would become a reptile and then you would become a mammal. But then 
revisions occurred in the thinking. We still have the, the notion of grade. We still have this, this uh, paraphyletic notion of what, is, what a fish is and what a reptile is. But we had to come to realize that, that we need monophyly in order to make sense of taxonomy. And so, therefore, birds are reptiles. And we never were because we descend from synapsids, not diapsids. So it gets a little bit a little bit confusing. Why were we never reptiles? And then amphibians are a side group to amniotes. We're not; they're not ancestral to us. So that gets a little confusing for people who are not into taxonomy either. Why is why why didn't we come from amphibians? What do you mean they came from? It, it, it you have to study it a little bit. It's a, it's difficult to explain. I I would say like the thing. Okay. Reptiles, it was the example you gave, a, a, a one of them, and you mentioned that birds are out of that group, but they're not though. Birds are reptiles, strictly speaking, and the only reason you'd say they aren't is using a paraphyletic model. But like cladistically, and taxonomically, and like if you did it as a monophyly, they certainly would be. There's not a single thing about birds that would separate them from ex either extinct reptiles or even some extant reptiles, except for that you just want to call them something different because they flap. So, like, <laughs> yes, we can look at the birds and reptiles and say, okay, there's a clear difference here, but we're using just, like, these groups look different to make a new monophyletic group and to, 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 to split this group up. Why? What's a thing that birds do that reptiles have never done while still being reptiles? Well, I think I think it's it's a bit of a semantic argument, but not necessarily something about what they are. But I would say to that that yes, birds birds are theropsids. And sauropsids are the monophyletic clade that includes what we call reptiles oh, and what we call birds. Well, that's the thing, dude. Is like that, what, what I'm saying is saying like sauropsids is synonymous with reptile. That's that's just a language choice. Yes, um, well, but, that's, but that's exactly what I'm saying. Common use is that we've like been able to see. So in common use, we've we've defined reptiles a certain way, fish, lizards, monkeys a certain way that is based on excluding one particular group of descendants and just grouping those together. And the let me, let me jump it again. differences are also pretty obvious, but with with both fish and reptile, huh? they, they had a definition in the nineteenth century. And they were both cold blooded, uh, and and fish were supposed to have um, fish were supposed to have gills with gill bars, and they were supposed to have fins, and uh, and, and and then reptiles were supposed to have scales and claws, uh, and then they started realizing well snakes don't have claws do they? Uh, you well know, pythons and such, um, but but you know, snakes don't always have have uh, scales, and and not all reptiles it turned out had scales, and not all of them were necessarily cold-blooded. And likewise, fish. There are some fish known now to, uh, to have a little bit of homeothermy. Not a whole lot, but they can control their body temperature to a degree. So we had to start changing the definition. There was a lot of things that we called reptiles that didn't fit reptile. Alligators don't have scales. So we, ha we either have to make a whole bunch of exceptions, or we come up with one rule that works for everything. So if they're descended from this group, they have all these little collective traits because they're descended from that group. That's the answer. That, that's kind of where I'm at with it. Like, you, well, you know, just to, to stick with the theme, to stick, stick with the same example, like reptiles are cold-blooded, not warm-blooded, except for mosasaurs. Mosasaurs were definitely warm-blooded, and also avian dinosaurs were on their way to becoming warm-blooded if they weren't some of them already. Well, birds have feathers. Right, but lots of late Cretaceous dinosaurs had feathers. So, like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, birds have hollow bones. Archaeopteryx definitely wasn't a bird, but definitely had hollow bones. So, like, and, and I'm 99% sure Archaeopteryx. If I'm wrong about that, correct me. But like, I, I would, I would argue that Archaeopteryx. Is, 
I would argue that Archaeopteryx is not a true bird. It, right. Yeah. And there are plenty of other dinosaurs that, as you said, they were warm-blooded. They did have feathers, all of that. They were more bird than what, you know, in the old paraphyletic term, people would say, well, is it a bird or is it a dinosaur? Monophyletically, we don't argue whether Archaeopteryx, we, we can argue whether Archaeopteryx is a bird, but we don't argue whether he's a dinosaur. Right. And I just checked, it did have, have a, a, a hollow bones as well as a breast bone. Um, what about like air sacs? You know what I mean? Like uh, uh, reptiles don't have the, the big air sacs that birds have. Birds have that two, the, 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 the double set of lungs with the air sacs. Actually, sauropods, we're finding new evidence. We find like these grooves in their vertebrae and things that are showing that they probably almost certainly had these air sacs like birds do today. So like, I think you hit there the nail on the head. Of- you said, there are a whole lot of theropods no, known now. To, even Allosaurus yeah. are now known to that have it in a completely avian respiratory system. Yep. And so, like, I think you hit the nail on the head when you said it's all semantic. You're right. It is. It absolutely is. But that's the issue with poly, uh, paraphyletic groups and, indeed, polyphyletic groups. We're only talking about paraphyletic. That's the issue with paraphyletic groups is that, yes, they are useful. They are undoubtedly useful. But they are purely a semantic game. And so they are not well-defined by definition and they change all the time because of it because we're like actually we can't justify splitting these things anymore so we're just gonna say they're different because we don't want to have to rethink everything this is a category that works well for us and destroying it makes no difference and so we're just going to keep the category and call it a new thing and so we're going to call it a new clade and like you're allowed to do that but you can't pretend like it's nearly as strong as a monophyletic group Well, yes, I, so I, I don't agree, disagree with any of the arguments that you're making, but I think they're not necessarily, I think they're not necessarily a reason to discount paraphyletic groups as strongly as you're saying, because I, I, I mean, think I think it's just... This. They're just not well-defined. That's the, that's the whole thing. Like, it, you, you came here looking for an argument. I'm giving it to you. I, I like paraphyletic groups for their use. They're fine. I don't have an issue with them. I'm not going to be mad at them. But, like, we, they, they are a great example. When we talk about how, like, how, how biology is just putting boxes around things and it's just stamp collecting and shit like that, like, paraphyletic groups are, are a great example of that. Yeah. What makes a paraphyletic group is the fact that it's not well defined. Because. Yeah. It's what we used to think reptiles were until we realized that the, rept- that the definition we were using sucked. Uh, so, so my concern there is that we have, gr- we have names for the clades that, that we consider like reptile synonymous to. We have thoropsid, we have vertebrate, we have simian for monkeys, we have guamates for lizards and snakes so mm. i think what we what biologists like to do is to is to say like reptiles actually include birds and all of these other non-bird uh, uh, sauropsids but i think i don't know i think it's just i think it's fine to say that reptiles that that the sauropsid is the name for our monophyletic group, but we can just keep this term reptile to refer to everything else in sauropsids that aren't birds or everything well, we, else if, in fish that aren't tetrapods. What, what matters is that you're, you're speaking clearly and not confusing people. If you're going to use the word reptile, make sure that people understand which context you're talking about. There's very little application in modern biology for the 19th century version of reptile. If you want to use reptile, make sure it's synonymous with sauropsid, as you said. If, if I use the word fish, maybe I'm talking about uh, uh, all of chordates, all of chordata, or because there are some that, uh, that would qualify as fish that don't even have vertebrae. So being basal to vertebrates, you can still call them fish. But fish doesn't, if fish has a general application in colloquial language that if you talk about different types of fish, people know that you're, you, you're t- probably talking about teleosts, right? But, and you don't, maybe you don't want to say teleosts. It just depends on who the audience is. And, and are you speaking clear enough that they're not going to be confused? 
Yeah, I can definitely agree with that. It's so this is somewhat related, but I, I so I I think something that I've heard from you guys a lot is about how something in in evolution something never stops being part of the groups that it descended from. You can't so, grow out of your ancestry. Like birds never stop being reptiles. Exactly. So I think so I've been arguing for paraphily here, but I think I think there's something somewhat related in how you choose to define the monophyletic groups as well uh, that I want to bring up, which is that I think it would make more sense to group humans as reptiles and amphibians by changing the definition of amniote and tetrapod. And my argument for that would be that our, our uh, ancestral lineage includes things that looked very reptile-like and very amphibian-like. So why not just go the whole way and open up those groups more? I mean, th that's one of the things that, like, if you ask, like, a biologist, like, yeah, a human's a fish, sure. And, 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 you know, it's like, like Aaron just said, you can't outgrow your ancestry. So like, yeah, we fall in that lump, but fish is also a polyphyletic group. And so it's like, just, it's kind of what it is. You know what I mean? So like you could do that. Uh, you'd radically change a lot of things for the sake of receiving the exact same outcome or achieving, pardon me, the exact same outcome, which is just, here's, here's this pile. And these guys are different than those guys. What are you gonna do? Uh, you know I mean? It wouldn't really have a major effect. Yeah, it just comes down to the context. What you're talking about. There's a, there are times when you're talking about if you're talking with scientists about systematics. There's there there's times when you would not say reptile or fish, but if you're talking to people at the grocery store, you would say those words because though depending on the understanding that you're trying to convey. If you're talking about the 19th century grade of what people expect to be usually scaly, you know, finned things with gills, then use fish because that's what people will understand. You're, you're trying to communicate. And I don't see a value also, to... When we're speaking about systematics to, to scientists, we're, there's no purpose in using fish or reptile most often. Also, I think... I, I, I think I said fish is a polyphyletic group a minute they're a paraphyletic group i don't i did okay i i thought i caught that and i was like that's not right did i even say that i i meant paraphyletic i'm sorry i just, yeah, I, I, I just, I just you, you also said earlier different. in the show you also said earlier in the show let's talk about things we believe in like evolution got to be pedantic we don't believe in evolution. exactly yep, yep. <laughs> no that's good that's that's the shit you gotta catch me on, dude. Cause I'll just ramble off and I'll I'll miss what I'm saying. I'll go back later and be like, that's not what I meant to say. Oh damn. Anyway, yeah, yep. that's that's the whole thing, dude. Is like it's yeah, these these you know, it it's just I think to argue that these groups are useful, absolutely, no doubt, no question, no argument. That is what they're there for. Um, to say they're well defined, I think doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, and to say that we should change other definitions to make the whole thing more easy. Um, is a way too much collateral damage for the limited like success that it would actually bring. Um, if yep. for, for, for I should say for the limited benefit that it would bring, I I think that it it just isn't worth the effort. Um, but that's just me. Okay. Yeah, that that makes sense. Right on, Jan. I really appreciate the conversation, though. I, I love uh, this was fun to talk about because I it's usually stuff we don't get to talk about outside of class. You know what I mean? Um. <laughs> I also I, I liked having fun. Oh with yeah, totally. I was adversary. I was so excited when I learned that birds are reptiles and dinosaurs. I could not shut up about it. Yeah, I, I can tell you that <laughs> there was a time cool. I was taught in my youth that apes were different from monkeys, and I was just I was taught that everywhere, you know. And then I get into an argument with a systematist around about Y two K. 
And he probably could have convinced me if he was a little more, more polite. He was a complete asshole. But he was explaining monophily to me in, in a really objectionable way. And I tried to argue with him. But, and it took a while. But I eventually had to concede. And I had to write back to the guy to admit, damn it, you're right. We are monkeys. <laughs> uh, I think also... Yeah, so here's uh, I, uh, our own uh, Erica Gibbon uh, did two videos about this. Here's uh, You Are a Monkey and an oh. Ape explaining nesting hierarchies. I know, Jan, you already know this stuff, but it's just for anybody else in the audience who wants to see it. Uh, and she just released this video as well, Why Did Apes Lose Our Tails? And at the beginning of it, she really explains, like, you know, why saying, you know, uh, ape, not monkey, and all this stuff is kind of, a little bit overly pedantic, but also still useful. Again, just explaining paraphily and explaining how this stuff works. Anyway, thanks so much for your call, Jan. I appreciate it. We, we got a couple more on the line we're going to jump over to. I, I love Erica's channel as well. Oh, she's so cool, dude. It's, I love doing shows with her. We, she and I haven't done a show in a long time, but I love doing shows with her because it is so fucking crazy to like sit here and have an argument alongside someone who is so very clearly very much smarter than me. You know what I mean? She just blows me out of the water. It's awesome. <laughs> anyway, uh, with that, we're going we're gonna to move on. But thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. We've got two calls left. One of them dropped, but I'm going to go for the one who's been waiting the longest. Um, and this is this person has been waiting for two hours and ten minutes. And then we've got one more person who's been waiting for two hours and five minutes. So I'll go for the 10-minute caller at first. Um, we've got BB, pronouns he, him, calling him from Barcelona, uh, has a question about the role of homosexuality in social species, including humans, um, uh, was introduced, how it was introduced to the gene pool. Um, I've got a lot of things about this. I don't know if you do RM, but BB, you are on the line. How are you doing today? Hi, good night, guys. Well, good night for me. Good evening for you again. Thanks so much for calling in. I'm sorry you had to wait for so long. No, it's fine. I'm glad it was five minutes earlier than the other guy. <clears throat> <laughs> um, anyway, um, I was reading... I, I, actually, I don't remember if I read it or I watched a video somewhere about how um, homosexuality could, be the, could have been developed in, in humans as a, an evolutionary advantage over a different human tribe. And I don't know where are your thoughts on that. I don't know if you have heard that argument. Yeah, uh, well, so I, I would just say... Um, oh, sorry. Homosexuality you becomes more... I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I'll, I, no, it's fine. I'll, I'll be quick, and then we'll, we'll go from there. So, like, the, the first thing that I would say is that, like, there are a lot of hypotheses over why homosexuality exists. There's not one that really stands above the others too well. It's kind of just up in the air. We don't know for sure what's there. What we do know is that we have observed homosexuality in over, like, 1,500 animal species. And that's not just mammals. We've observed homosexuality in like every kind of mammal. In you know, like uh, we've observed it in fish. We've observed it in insects. We've observed homosexuality all over the place. In fact, there's one um, really cool paper that was presenting an alternative hypothesis that like labeling homosexuality as a thing might not really be a, a, a really naturalistic way to do things because sex is just sex. And there's maybe we're thinking too hard about it. You know, I mean, maybe we're putting our descriptive heteronormative worldview on nature, which is just people be fucking. Um, and so, uh, but yeah, homosexuality is all over the place. And so there are a lot of hypotheses for why it's beneficial in humans and why it's so ubiquitous across the animal kingdom. I would just say that, like, I don't think looking at why it's beneficial for humans is reasonable. It's very clearly an ancestral trait. It's not derived. It's not new. It's something that we came pre-equipped with. So as for like how it got into the human gene pool, we evolved with it. It's been here the whole time. And I have no evidence to suggest otherwise. Unless, unless for the past like damn near 4 billion years, everybody was straight. And then suddenly 12,000 years ago, <laughs> the whole damn world decided to be gay and like humans included. That, sure, maybe, I guess if that happened, something's in the water. They, they're turning the frogs and the humans gay, but I don't know. Um, but, like, you know, we, we've seen homosexuality in, like, damn near every other species that can have deliberate sex. So it, it, to, to say that we're special for observing it or that we are uh, for having some sort of reason to have it in our species really doesn't make a tremendous amount of sense for it. But there are hypotheses for it in humans, and we can go into those if you want. Um, 
Aaron, did you have something else you wanted to throw in there? I was going to say that the, 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 the percentage propensity for homosexuality is higher, of course, in higher populations. When you get something that is a, grossly overpopulated, what is the harm in some of those, you know, not continuing to produce in the gene pool and, you know, in, and in, in turning to uh, homosexuality. So they're not reproducing so much, you know, there, there might be some emergent controls in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I, the reason I wanted to ask this is because uh, what you mentioned, Forrest, about how it's observed in all animals, basically. But I heard this argument uh, for humans, so I was curious about your thoughts, and I called on the perfect day because two great minds are here, so I appreciate that, guys. Yeah, and like the, the ideas about why the, it, it's a thing in lots, especially in social species, aren't crazy like they just they don't have a lot going for them. so like for example one of the, the really popular ones is the gay uncle hypothesis the idea that like it's it, in a social species like humans or pretty much any other great ape it's useful to have a male with like a male phenotype that can be the big brazen dominant one and everything like that that isn't interested in the sexual competition for females but is there at home helping take care of kids helping to raise young ones helping to to protect uh, you're closer to the to the center of the group that's a thing kind of li a little bit a little bit of sexist kind of like uh, um uh how you say stereotyping in there a little bit but not not too much you know it's okay um that's one thing uh another one that's really popular is like it's good for team building um a great example of that is bonobos you know bonobos they have sex to say hello. They have sex to say goodbye. They have sex to solve an argument. They have sex to celebrate that the argument's been solved. They have, it's all the time. Um, and so like, it's really good for like cultural homogeny and like building uh, 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 relationships and like building trust. And like you can look at like the, the Spartans and, and stuff. You, know, you have this really tight knit, excellent super soldiers that are out there winning fight after fight. And definitely railing each other at night because they're just those good <laughs> bros and like the, those kind of things where it's like it's it's all about building a bond and stuff like that um there's also uh you know ta dominance and hierarchy that that homosexuality could actually be used as a weapon to 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 establish dominance over somebody you know what i mean um to to th that was a thing we saw uh, a lot of cultures especially like roman and stuff like that like homosexuality was totally accepted it was totally fine um it wasn't so much are you having sex with someone of the same sex it's or of the same gender it's like who's the bottom that's really where the issue is and so like you know that's that's the stigma it's not that you fucked a dude it's that you got fucked by a dude that's gay fucking a dude is fine but you're you're the one who fucked by a dude and you know that and so like there was like i remember um i think it was caesar i can't remember the name of the other guy i'm just gonna make up a name here i'm gonna say john um, but there was this other king that Caesar was like in a, in a homosexual relationship with. And so like Caesar was like this great conqueror going out conquering the whoever's. And there was like this political slogan, that, like Caesar conquered the whoever's, but John conquered Caesar. And that was like kind of chastising him. You know what I mean? And so like, I can't, you, you can look up this, this actual story, but like, um, yeah, th that's the thing, dude, is like, it seems that our understanding and our thoughts of homosexuality today are a lot more rooted in like cultural norms than in actual biology and that in like real the the actual world out there just <laughs> animals have sex when they want to and that's fine and they don't probably think about it nearly as much as we do <laughs> yeah Okay, well, thank and you. Yes, that's, that's somebody, all I have. somebody from the line, possibly Jimmy, possibly Arden, possibly whoever else. Uh, yeah, Caesar was referred to by the people as a woman's man and a man's woman at the time because he was sexually promiscuous with other dudes, but also like a conqueror and stuff. And like, yeah. Um, and so that was a whole thing. You can look up uh, 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 Esme Louise James, I think her name is. Um, she's a, a sex historian and she does like the history of kink and stuff. Um, and she's got a bunch of, oh, it's a Morgan typing there. I didn't know a Morgan had access to that particular thing. Cool. Um, but uh, yeah, th that's a, uh, she's got a great series on TikTok. And I believe she has a book out now and a TED Talk and all sorts. She's doing an amazing job 
teaching people about the history of dildos. Uh, and I don't mean that to sound like condescending, like she's actually doing a fucking amazing job teaching people about the history of dildos. It's really cool. So look her up. She's really cool. Does does that uh, history of dildos include Bezos's ship? <laughs> right. That's that's more of a, a, a phallic symbol of it. It's a, that's a stuffer. If it's anything, that's a stuffer. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's, that's something to make things look bigger than they are. Hey, BB, does that answer your question, or do you have something else? No, that's it. Thank you, guys. I don't want to take up any more time. Okay. You're awesome, dude. Thank you so much for waiting so long, and thanks for the great question. Seriously. Thank you, guys. Have a good day. Bye-bye. All right, so we are down to one. We got one left, and then there was one. We've got the last one is Tina, right on she, her, calling in from Germany, uh, who is an atheist who wants to, uh, says a, a while ago, this is what's on the call screen. A while ago, a theist caller tried to present a case about Nazi soldiers being reformed by Christianity and wants to speak to me about some questions that she has regarding the cases made for Christianity within the Nazi regime. This is probably because I mentioned the fact that Nazis were also Christian. Um, and so, like, saying I this Nazi I've soldier stopped couple, being... I've made a couple of videos yeah. about that myself. Yeah, so, like, the, the, the whole argument that I made on that call was that you can't say, well, Christianity helped this Nazi soldier not be a Nazi anymore when the rest of the Nazis were rooted in Christianity or had like this Christian theology backing them up. Um, and there's a lot to say there, but maybe that's not what they're asking. I don't know. Tina, you are uh, now on the line. Um, and is that what you're calling about? Or is there something else that I'm missing? Like, like tell us what you want to talk about. Uh, hi. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks for taking the call. Let's talk about Nazis. Always a fun time. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Um, um, I think we agree on the fact that you can't really call the Nazis an atheist movement, and I think we can agree on the fact that um, the Nazi torture reformed by Jesus is, is a load of bullshit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but, but you did make some arguments that made me go, um, actually, I, 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 I could feel the fedora manifesting on my head. And I know that some of the things, things I'm going to say are going to sound very nitpicky, and it's probably best that you save me for last. Um, no, it's fine. It's it's okay. I I love <laughs> like the thing about nitpicky things like this. Um, if I'm arguing with theists about this stuff, and there's something that I'm misconstruing yeah. or saying wrong, those yeah. little nitpicky things are going to be used by them to dismiss my entire argument. So I'm glad you're bringing them up. Yeah. Yeah, okay. It was a wild call. It was, uh, it's been a while ago, so it feels unsporting to bring it up, actually. Um, it, it was, I think, on January 1st. And the reason I'm calling now is that I, I think I watched the stream in January, and it, it's been making my brain itch ever since. And someone on your channel has been doing a fantastic job of reposting interesting conversations. And um, they posted this one on the weekend. It was a guy named Chief. It was a wide-ranging conversation. I, I'm trying to jog your memory a bit. Um, I hope mm. that's okay. Um, yeah. You started out uh, talking about evolution, and you had all kinds of questions about um, why mammals um, take so long to learn stuff, and it was about uh, heads get, getting bigger to evolution. I, I can't recall the, the exact um, terminology in English. I'm sorry. Mm. Um, and, and then he came to his point about the Nazi soldier, and I, I recall you were making several arguments. One of them was about belt buckles. Okay. Yeah, you said, no, what, what does it say in every Nazi soldier? Belt buckle, got mit uns. And I, uh, I said, said, whoa, whoa, that, that doesn't really sound like the Nazi rhetoric you've, you've been studying, you've been learning, because it's not the the core rhetoric isn't really religious in the christian sense and so i did some digging on that i, I landed on some very dubious websites that i never want to go back to um where they where they sell this stuff and um the first picture i found was of, of one of these belt buckles but um it didn't have the iconography that you usually uh, associate with with nazis like you know, the eagle and the swastika and stuff uh, it, it had a crown Mm. And and that's so, usually usually something you associate with Nazis because they didn't have anyone wearing a crown. I mean, I mean, if you had offered it, he would have said yes, probably, but they didn't have anyone wearing wearing a crown. So um, that belt buckle came from World War One, and um, the slogan itself is a holdover from 
the German Empire, actually. So I just like looked up just just tertiary Google search here. Um, this is from the John okay. F. Kennedy Presidential Library and Museum here in the States. Mm -hmm. um, and they actually have a picture here of, of a belt buckle that was actually collected by Ernest Hemingway, of all people. Um, yeah. It's a metal belt buckle. It says, God mit uns. It's got a, the eagle and the swastika yeah. on there and all these things. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, like, this is just a picture of one that, that it's uh, one of the many Nazi souvenirs that he collected at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, so yeah, I don't no, know. I'm not, like, I'm, not if, say, I'm not saying they didn't do it. I'm saying they didn't invent yeah. it. Because oh no no no, of course not. They they didn't. Uh, for the most part, Nazis didn't invent shit, except for yes. industrial yeah, not, uh, extermination. Yeah, I I don't think that they were unique in any way by by doing this. I just think that it's important to point out that like, yeah, in the same way that like. You know, we we have like in God we trust in all of our money yeah. over here, and we have it on. All, it's our national yeah, model. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily mean that everything that happens in this country and by this country is rooted in Christianity. But especially with this being a military thing, that's on like these yeah. belt, like that. That is, I think, good evidence to say that it's there's a Christian background here that needs to be addressed. You know what I mean? So I don't think they Absolutely. invented it. I don't think that it was unique. No, no, no. But the argument no, no, no. I was making is just that, like, it Absolutely. plays a big part. Absolutely. But, uh, and um, you, you can absolutely make an argument that um, the Nazi party was a relig religious movement if you look at what they said. Because uh, in, yes. in, in, their part, uh, in their party foundational documents, they had paragraph 24 where they said, no, we are rooted in, in cultural Christianity. And, and I think that's an important distinction to make. Like culturally Christian is, is is different from being religiously Christian, I think. Yeah. And and, and that's not to say that there wasn't any dissent. I think it was um the, oh. the main propagandist, uh, uh Goebbels, wasn't it? I think it was. Um yeah. he 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 said that like Nazism and Christianity were completely irreconcilable. And I, I think he was mainly talking about the Jews being God's chosen people and the whole thing about like freedom and shit in there. I don't think he liked that. And so yeah, like, uh, uh, yeah. like, yes. So like there were prominent Nazi figures that were very anti-Christianity. Um, yeah. But also at the end of the day, the, the first, I, I think one of the other things I probably brought up on that call is like the yeah. first treaty they ever signed was with the Catholic church. And one thing I, I probably didn't bring up because it would be anecdotal. Um, at best, mm. is that like the the population of Nazi Germany? This is an anecdotal, but it's irrelevant. The mm. population of Nazi Germany was overwhelmingly Christian, um, like, like ninety something absolutely. percent. I, th I, th I think but, it was like one percent. Uh, absolutely. I mean, in, in, in the nineteenth century, pro university professors were losing their tenure because they were suspected to be atheists. I mean, yes. Um, that was actually a point I was going to make. I, I think you're um, alluding to the Concordat, I, I don't know how you call it in English, with, with the Vatican, because that was actually their first, um, uh, how do you say, their first international political success. Because the Weimar mm -hmm. Republic before them had been trying to make that treaty and they had failed. So of course it was, it was a badge of honor for the Nazis to say, okay, the dudes before us, they failed, but we, we are doing it. Funny thing is, yeah. they signed the treaty in April 33, and by autumn, they were violating it. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. in their treaty, they had, <laughs> no, they, they, yeah, no, I, mean, I mean, sure. In, in their treaty, they said, okay, um, Catholic Church, you fall in line with, with our with our." No, program you, you get with the program and in exchange uh, your priests can go around and they can preach and, and, and they will be free to go around and do their um, pastoral care work etc and uh, mm -hmm. well that lasted for a long time um with, with the protestant churches it was a bit more complicated because it was very splintered at the time i think there were like 28 different denominations which is a lot Considering that yeah. nowadays it's mainly uh, Lutheran Protestants, um, uh, and um, there, there was in, in fact uh, an organization within the Nazi Party that called themselves the German Christian Movement, yeah. and, and they were 
practically terrible calling. Uh, I, I don't know how familiar you are with uh, like the Nazi abbreviation of SS and SR and the like. Because these people were calling themselves the SR of Jesus Christ. Like, yeah. Because, in the, I mean, Germany was full of Nazis at the time. Of course, there were also Christian Nazis and Nazi Christians, etc., etc. I mean, the Venn diagram was not quite a circle, but it, it had some overlap, definitely. Um, thing is, um, this uh, this um, movement um, tried to abolish um, the Old Testament, actually. <laughs> Because you were saying, you have a saying, oh, it's, it's too Jewish. I think this is an mm. interesting example, actually, of um, doing the reasonable thing for the wrong fucking reason. That but is I, the, I mean, the Old Testament. It is awfully Jewish, isn't it? <laughs> it's awfully Jewish. Yeah, no, that's, it's awfully, that's the whole I'm, thing. I mean, like it, I mean it, it's not anything to do with, like, um, I, I think the biggest thing is that, like, the the way that they did that or, or, or the way that that, mm -hmm. that kind of thing that's also not and i know you you weren't making this point but i think it's important to point mm -hmm. out that's also super not unique amongst religions is like all right Absolutely here's enough. the narrative we've had for thousands of years we are now going to dramatically change it because mm -hmm. it fits our political yeah. motives today the reason why here yeah. in the united states so many evangelical churches are now very very mm -hmm. openly you know accepting of lgbt people despite being the mm. major driving force in anti-gay rights for so long. And now they need money and they're going to get so like, Oh no, we love everybody here. So come on in. It's great. Um, yeah, that's, that's, it's tough. Um, is there any other, yeah, like what, yeah, what, what other nitpicky things did you have for me? Like what, what other things, things you noticed um, I said that might not have you, you did, you did say that their anti-Semitism and that persecution of the Jews, what was not racist, but religious. I don't know whether you said it because that was uh, the, the level of, of the caller and, and what he could comprehend or whether that was actually your point. And I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but that was what, what if, I heard. If I said exactly, yeah. If I said those words, I was wrong. Um, I, I, I might, I, what I was trying to say at that time, and I, 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 yeah, I don't remember the exact call, but like, I can tell you that I would say that there is a major religious mm. reason for persecuting Jews. Um, however, it is important to point out that Jew is referring to an ethnicity as well as a religion. Yeah. And yes, there was a racist component to that as well. So if I said it that way, I was wrong and I take it back. I, I didn't mean it that way. It was a very heated conversation. It's just, I think it's yeah. important to clear these things up afterwards. Yes. No, because, that's right. And it, no, so yeah, if, if I misspoke, that's one thing. But if I said that, that was stupid. No, I shouldn't have said it that way. <laughs> I won't say it that it's way very anymore. Possible. It's, it's, it's very possible. I may have misheard, but I, I think that's what you, it, it, it was very, it was very, it was, it was heated. So maybe it slipped out. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Who knows? Yeah. Because I, I mean, um, because uh, a bunch of Jewish people who'd been living uh, in, in Europe for a while had been baptized. At first, they, they thought that that would protect them, actually, and it turned out it didn't. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was a, it was a whole whole stupid uh, racist thing as whole, well, yeah. And that's that's still a thing today, unfortunately. It's it's wild how yeah. prevalent that remains. And that that's a whole thing, too, is like, that's, that's one of the arguments. I, I know this isn't what this is about, but like, if anybody mm. out there is still a race realist, if somebody still thinks races are a real thing, the the way that Irish people, Italian people, and Jewish people have become white over the past century mm -hmm. should be a good indication that it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> isn't isn't that interesting? I mean, yeah, and it's it's it really current. I don't know whether it's it's made the news in America, but uh, here in Germany, uh, it's been it's been a very big topic. That um, in in January that there was a big report that. Um, Members of our far right party um, had been having a meeting in, in November of last year in some in some little hotel in the countryside with um, mm -hmm. known far right extremists and activists from, from the identitary movement from from abroad from Austria and Switzerland and so and and, and they were discussing a plan called remigration. Mm, that sounds totally reasonable and that safe and not at all lovely. problematic and gross. Absolutely yeah. not. The, the plan is actually to deport any and all 
um, immigrants that do not have citizenship and to lower the threshold to revoke this, the, the German citizenship of, of people who have dual citizenship. So that then you so can most, them too. So the exact same thing that the far right extremists in my country are doing. Awesome. That's yeah. Lit literally, they, 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 they had one um, representative from, from our Bundestag, our parliament, sitting there and, yeah. and uh, the dude from Austria, because they, uh, where do they always come from there? Um, and he, he was finished and she said, that's funny, that's the exact same plan I've been having in my drawer ever since I was elected. So uh, yeah, uh, fun times, fun times. Uh, which which makes it so important to talk about these things, and which uh, which makes it important also, I think, to refute these claims that uh, the Nazi movement was an atheist movement. I, I I actually think it's a bad strategy to paint them as a Christian movement because I think the better strategy is to paint them as a cult. Are you still there? Did I lose you? I'm th I'm th I'm here. Uh, could you? Uh, I I was I was. Talking basically to myself, probably. Um, no, it's okay. The, the very last, last thing I heard you say okay. is you think you think it's a bad idea to paint them as a Christian organization, and you were explaining why. And I, I it was actually my fault. My phone yeah. connected to my headset, so I, I didn't hear what you it's said. Okay, it's okay. Basically, the point I was trying to make is um, the better strategy in my eyes is, is, is to show that they are a cult. They're, they're using the same strategies, the same techniques as most religions, and and and. Um, they say this explicitly. I mean, uh, I, I have not read Mein Kampf. I'm not going to, but I did. I did have a lecture yeah. at university on rhetoric, and um, and um, the professor was quoting one of the passages, and um, it was explicitly that you know, that Hitler was describing how churches are so very good at um, creating this atmosphere, this atmosphere of awe and making people receptive. And that, you know, that these are the techniques they should use, that they are practically using the, the techniques and the rhetoric of religion and um, the cult of the messianic figure to pull people along. I think that yeah. I, that I, might be a better strategy to, to deal with these kinds of arguments, personally. I, th I think the... I, th I think you, you make a really good point. Um, the, I think the, the biggest issue that I would have is that, like, I, I would call, like, I would make it a point in a call to try to mm. blur the lines between religion and cult and show that the real, the real actual definer here is size. You know what I mean? Um, and so I would yeah. agree with you that, that, that Nazis started out as a cult um, and that this became like this bigger and bigger thing, politically, socially, and religiously, very much cult-like behavior. Um, uh, yeah. I, but I think at a certain point, you can't just, it, to, to, to call it a cult at the scale that it was at and not to call mm. it religiously motivated, I think is to, to diminutize it a little bit, in my opinion, anyway. And so I would have an issue doing that. I think you raise a yeah, good yes, argument. Yes, and I think yes, it's yes and no. Yes and no, because I, I, mm. I wasn't really thinking of size, but that is an excellent point. I was more thinking of the bite model. Because yeah, that, yes. If you, yes. If, because if you run Nazism through the bite model, you're probably, be, probably going to get the high score. I mean. Yeah, that, exactly, exactly. And so, like, that's the thing. I, I, that's that's a fantastic thing to bring up. Um, and so, yeah, the bite model is something that I use to address a lot of religion a lot of the time. So, using it for this as well, I think, is is spectacular. Um, and uh, yeah, I, th I think you know, what, I I don't think you said anything here that's untoward <laughs> or unreasonable. Um, depending on Thank where you. I go with it or where you go with it, whatever. I I think it's 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 a, you make some good points and. Uh, yeah, I I don't agree whole a hundred percent on like how to I don't agree whole a hundred percent on like how to address it further. But I don't like I said I don't think anything you said is crazy. Um, there's a really cool uh channel. She's on TikTok and I know. Um, and I looked her up. Um, Frau Lohenherz, L O E W E N H E R Z. Um, uh, Le Leone, I believe her name is Leone Lohenherz. Um, and she is a Lionheart. La yes. I, I can never, my dad was Austrian and uh, spoke fluent German. You sound just like my aunt and it's making me smile. Uh, they never taught oh. me a freaking word of German. And so I struggle sometimes. Um, but uh, 
they, uh, uh, this Actually, lady is Leonie, a... Leonie Löwenherz is, uh, is a beloved character from, from a TV show from my childhood, actually. Oh, that's lovely. Um, yes. But uh, this lady, she, she, she is a, uh, a, a, a historian, and she studies political uh, science and, and journalism and history and all sorts of things, um, and she yeah. specifically studies America. She studies American politics and American stuff, and a lot of her videos um, are like, here's this common knowledge German history lesson about Nazism and shit that people don't understand the rest of the world. Here's MAGA Republicans. Notice how I yeah. said the same thing twice. And like it's very yeah. yeah, and that 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 really jumps into my head because the way she describes it is very cult, mm. very cultish. Yeah. And so the way yeah. that you're describing this, you know, I think is a really, really awesome way of of of, of lining that up. It, it is you're absolutely right. It's it's it to, to talk about it in cult terms, especially early on, um, and to talk mm. about the rise of it, um fucking nail on the head there. Uh, so yeah, I, th I think that's a great analogy, and a, or not even an analogy, a great way to contextualize it for people. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that's really nice. Right, I'm, I'm glad I'm making sense because it's like uh, half past two in the morning over here. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, right yeah, thank you for all you that. We do have one us? more caller. We have one more caller okay. popping in. Oh, great. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tina. I really appreciate you talking to me. And like, I, I love being corrected. And I love when anybody can point out something that I, like I said, that if, if, if I said that persecution of Jews was strictly religious and not ethnic, that was, I didn't mean that. And so I, I appreciate you pointing that out. Okay. That's, that's I, really kind I, of you. I, I, didn't there's anything think, else? I didn't think you did, but it's, it's been making my brain itch. So thanks. Thanks for scratching. That, that's why I'm saying it, um, if, if anybody else took it that way too, because if, 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 if you heard it that way, then somebody else did. So anybody listening to that, I, I hope I, I can put an asterisk in there and okay. say, like, you know, I, I, must, I must have been too fired up to notice what I was saying. Okay, fantastic. So um, th thanks for the conversation. I'm very happy that I made it through without uh, the condescending laugh and without uh, being muted and everything. <laughs> and um, yes, well. I, if you um, want, I can, I can be you for of... fun if you'd like. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, no, no, the, the, big, the big one was I didn't want to do the condescending laugh. Uh, you know the one. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, um, well you've been fantastic. Big, thank you very much. So big shout out to whoever's been um, feeling best of con uh, conversations uh, to the channel. It's been a blast watching it. Great shout out to the call screener. She was lovely. And um, have a great evening night day whatever thank you so much tina <laughs> good night tina thanks so much for staying up late with us night. Night. okay bye tina's awesome nice lady like i said she sounds like my aunt and it, it, it just tickles me it, de it depends on like the day of the week with her like she'll she'll some she lives in texas so sometimes she'll have like a you know you, you can barely tell but like it's the same thing my dad was the same way everybody told my dad he had this strong accent and i didn't notice but if I spent the weekend with her, or with him, fuck, if I spent the weekend with him, I come away from it so, talking like Tina. <laughs> it's, it's wild. Um, anyway, you said we had another call jump in, but it looks like we didn't. I don't know. Well, I was seeing one. Matt White was in there. Yeah, I think that that one was a term. I think they called and then hung up, and so it was still in like the back room. Yeah, that was a terminated call. Yeah, apparently. It was yeah. a terminated call. Like okay. Yeah, my yeah, my screen changed. Sorry about that. Yep, oh, it's right. okay. It's okay. I think, yeah, they they must have dropped right as we were wrapping up as well. Um, with that, uh, we got some super chats. Uh, do you want to? Why right. do you want to do this? Do you want to read them? Do you want me to read them? Do you want to bounce back and forth? What do you want to do? Let's all bounce back and forth. So we have ten dollars Californian, uh, or rather Canadian, from Monster in oh. Head, and said, "Let's get this party started." You know, the, the, I would take Californian dollars, but Canadian dollars, I don't know. If, if, if Canadians, you need to pay twice as much to, in order to have us appreciate it as much as American dollars. You should, should pay double. 20 Canadian dollars for every 10 American dollars. Don't actually do that. I'm so stupid. Uh, $20 from Nathan Marcos. Just had an awful day at work. I'm so sorry to hear that. I'm glad to come home and get some Forrest and R in action. Uh, that's Patreon exclusive to see us take action. Uh, maybe we'll see Roland too. Who knows? It's exciting. 
1999 from Squimbly, my two favorite hosts on one show. Oh boy, this is shaping up to be an amazing stream. And here we oh, are. Let anybody down, as always. We still didn't right, get any We didn't get any argument. arguments. I, that, that kind We're of bugs me because I argue with people all day, every day in 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 text, right, and all in various social media platforms. And a lot of oh, times yeah. they'll brag that they would so destroy me in a in a real life interaction. Well, okay, where are you? Yeah. The Here the I amount am. of people that tell me that I'm stupid and crazy and wrong about evolution, about gender, about atheism, about you name it. And I, um, I, I on, on every platform I have, and I let them know that these streams are happening. If every one of those people called in, we would have a book show every week. It would be great. <laughs> it would be solid. We'd be slammed with calls. But uh, alas, it's, it's very yeah. easy to, to sit the keyboard. Um, $5 from Monkey at Typewriter. Hey guys, gotta play, go play D and D, so I'm missing the live. Yada yada, obligatory joke about Kyle and child dissection. Y'all rock, uh, and they put a <laughs> monkey emoji. I want to say that that means like you rock the monkey, and that sounds sexual. I like it. So thank you very much for that. That's very kind of you. <laughs> then ten euro from Lenny. Unclear gender equals lots of staring. Is there an evolutionary reason why we care so much about? IDing the gender of a person, even if there is no intention to interact with them, it's cultural. You know, we 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 yeah. have come to we have been trained to delineate people into these mm -hmm. two different these two basic groups. Yep. Yeah, we we live in a bizarrely heteronormative and like cis focused society, uh, and so when you see somebody who falls outside that norm, you make a bigger deal out of it than it actually needs to be. And if we were to train, you know, this same culture, the same society, if we were to teach kids that these things didn't matter and to not stereotype people this way, it, you wouldn't have these responses. So, like, no, there's no evolutionary reason. It's just a stupid cultural reason. Yeah, and it made a much bigger deal when when I was young, because you know, just there's a lot that's changed just in the last say three or four decades from people's attitudes. I used to, when I was a little kid, I used to have to listen to explanations about why women cannot be fighter pilots for the physical, mm -hmm. biological women. Why but those reasons why women cannot be fighter pilots or whatever else that it was that they wanted to be. There would always had to be some kind of excuse and it was always seemingly made yep. up on the spot or based on studies that uh, are dubious and questionable. Yeah. Oh, it's the, it's the same thing as like, you know, when they invented the steam engine and we had the railroads in this country, um, you know, there were real news articles in like science publications talking about how if a woman were to get on a train that went 30 miles an hour, they would kill her, that their uterus would fly out of their body and they'd die. And that was a real confusion. That was an actual concern that if a woman went more than 30 miles an hour, their uterus would fucking prolapse and fall out of their body. And they would kill them. And so we can't have women on trains. And like, yeah, there's a lot of dumb shit there. And like, I just, man, I can't, I can't put up with it. It's so stupid. We were talking today. I was talking with one of my kids today about when I was in middle school in like, say, 1976. And there was a movie out at the time called Future Shock. And it was warning us, warning us of the kind of future we were facing, the looming future, all the cultural differences that were on our horizon, things like people won't carry cash anymore. Everything will be on yeah. your credit card. Everything. You'll just pay for everything. We just stick a card in the machine and, and that'll be it. And nobody has cash. And, and some people, some people will have green hair. Mm hmm. Yeah. No, I remember seeing there was a, I, I remember seeing a, 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 a news report. Um, from who knows, probably late eighties or something like that about how a Wendy's had put in a credit card machine. And that was one of the things they were like, I can't imagine anybody using this. This is just ridiculous that they would have this thing in a fast food restaurant for goodness sake. You know what, 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 what's next? You know, like, hey, can you imagine a time where someone just goes around paying with everything with a credit card? That'd be crazy. And like, I do both, I guess, but like, why the fuck would I ever carry cash if I didn't have to, like, I, I like to have a something, but like, why? It's just so silly. Gosh, ten dollars. Sorry, five dollars from Dade Murphy. 
How do you tell the difference between an overly confident and incredulous Christian apologist and a troll? Isn't that um Oh there's some there yeah, well that's the thing. there's some law that it, it, on on the internet. The chat will tell me for sure of like it's impossible to tell the difference between just a really fucking stupid person and a troll anymore. Like uh, on the internet, it is impossible to know for sure if someone is trolling because like at the end of the day, there are actually people who would say such ridiculous things and be so hateful and be so obnoxious and be so ignorant and all these things. Pose law, thank you. Um, yeah, so like that's that's a thing. And so like an over overly confident and incredulous Christian apologist or a troll. The first call we had today was a guy saying, "Despite my best efforts, I can't make a hybrid with a chimp." I cannot tell you for sure. If that was something said in jest, if he was just being kind of silly and facetious, despite my, or if he actually was trying to get us to ask him if he's ever had sex with a chimpanzee so he could just waste our time. And the fact that he hung up while we were answering, I can't tell you for sure if that was because he's already made the stupid joke and his trolling is over now, or if he actually just was upset the fact that we had an actual conversation and he didn't want to stick around and argue with us. Or funny third thing. You know, I, I I couldn't tell you for sure. So, like, it's it's just, man, I can't tell you. It, you just can't know. And so we've got to just assume that people are calling in on good faith unless it's, like, blatantly obvious. Uh, and we've got to do our best to answer the calls and, and deal with them. And it's terrible. <laughs> and it's, a, it's a very, very frustrating David job. $10 from David Smith. Question for you both. What would be the best way to respond yeah. to someone who says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God? My reply to that, uh, and I made a YouTube short about this, is that we all understand that a fool is one who, will you shut up? I'm on camera. Stop it. A fool. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just sitting who, here. I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> a fool is one who too readily believes improbable claims from questionable sources on insufficient evidence. So it's no surprise that the Bible and the Quran both use the opposite definition from common parlance, because both of these books are trying to fool you. Yeah, the, I, I would just say, you know, if someone says a fool says in their heart there is no God, I would just say, okay, a fool says in their heart there is a God. Now what? We both said nothing. We have both said meaningless statements that don't lead us anywhere. Can we now start actually talking about evidence and reason? Like a, a fool says in their heart, there is no Easter bunny. Have I convinced you there's a fucking Easter bunny? Or have I just said some dumb, pedantic, fucking condescending shit, and now you get to deal with me? Like, what, yeah, what so are like, you actually trying to do here? So a propaganda piece said this uh -huh. thing, because that's what the Bible is. And a mm -hmm. propaganda piece that has been proven wrong on so many different things, scientifically and historically, ethically and morally. Why shouldn't this be just one more of myriad errors? Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude. What do we have next? And the next one is? We got, we got 400, I think that's rupees, um, from Gossinal. Gossinal? Gossinal. Gossinal. That's how I would say that. I'm into it. Hello, gentlemen. Have either of you heard of the Will Noland? Hmm. He's a, a former a, a Eton English teacher who got sacked for a pro-patriarchy pro lecture. Recently, he made a very funny video bl uh, of blithering about evolution, and PZ Myers tore it up. I don't know why I had such a hard time reading that. Um, <laughs> I have not heard of this person. That sounds like fun. Uh, I like PZ Myers. I've, I've seen him on a few things. Uh, I recently was reminded about him by a, a, another call-in show that I was doing, and I've yet to see anything that he's done that I haven't like really liked. Uh, PZ Myers, uh, what is that? Uh, Will Noland. I'll look that up for sure, because that sounds like fun. You see, I, I got on Free Thought Vlogs here uh, from PZ Myers. It just says, Will Noland knows nothing. Right on. <laughs> All right, so $10 from OCVJW. Aaron, love your videos. How does one start to research the IP, IPUWER, IPUR, IPUR Papyrus, confirming the Exodus account? I've never heard of that, uh, but let me read the question out the rest of the way. 
Oh, no, just the rest of it is Sir Forrest. Forrest, would you ever respond to Kent Hovind's attacks on you on his whack and atheist gimmick? Uh, yeah, I've talked about this before. Um, Kent Hovind, I'm, I'm going to be real honest with you, because I, I, I can sit here all day and, and make fun of Kent Hovind and, and do all these silly things about him, like bashing him and stuff like that, and frankly, he deserves it. But like, uh, uh, the, the honest, actual truth that I, is that Kent Hovind is just fucking played out trying desperately to remain relevant um he got real famous for saying a lot of blatantly wrong things about evolution that were easy to argue when we didn't have the internet as prevalent as we do today and when you know it wasn't as easy to make a response video to somebody and now he's just been demolished so many times by people who know like even just the bare minimum about like how like basic science works and he's still using the same dumbass arguments. He, he's the, it's the same thing over. He hasn't changed the script even a little bit. Um, and so this is the guy who said like most scientists agree that uh, Australopithecus uh, that, that Lucy was actually just a chimpanzee. And then you're like, okay, name one scientist who says that. And he's like, ah, no, no. he just says shit. And so like yep. the dude had a career being obnoxious. And then he went to jail, and 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 then he got out, and now he's got a cult where he has people, you know, run this fucking weird ass compound that he owns, uh, and his only hope is to get attention and to get people to talk about him and put him on their channels so he can use their like fame and their intelligence to prop himself up, and he can say that everybody's stupid, and he can be an asshole and be real sexist and racist and weird. And get more attention. He's an internet troll. He that that's yeah, what I've he does for a living. Handful of, a handful of his followers have demanded in comments in social media that I debate him, and, that, and saying that I'm afraid to debate him. And my response yeah. is, I have wasted that dude three times now. And while he took the videos off of his channel, they're still on mine. He doesn't want you to know yeah. that we debated because he saw how bad he did. But you can still see the debates on my channel. I've done it three times. Yep. He's done. Nobody ever needs to waste another minute on that carnival barker. Eric, by the way, I fucking I destroyed him, him in her debate with him immediately. Like, it's, 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 like this thing is. Sorry, go ahead. I know a handful of people who have debated him. I don't know any that lost. There yeah. was there was another comment which I doubt is going to show up because uh, I saw that I saw that it was deleted. I happened to see it when it was scrolling by, but I did, I saw that it was deleted later. But somebody. Matt Powell had apparently posted mm -hmm. a message asking why I am afraid to debate some name I some unfamiliar name of somebody I never heard of. Uh, I'm not afraid to debate anybody, just to make that clear. Uh, if I've never heard of the guy, what probably, are you going to do? Probably they never uh, even tried. Yeah, and so, that, and that's the thing is that like you know he. And, in one of the, the last times who, he did who, black, I, mean, I do have a short blacklist of people that I've already debated or, or people who don't warrant any attention. Because, like, you know, Kent Hovind is on that list. He's done. We've, mm -hmm. we've done this. It, Ray Comfort is on that list, too. I'm done with him. He, he had his chance. Mm -hmm. He blew it. And there's a couple of people that I haven't debated that are, that are just such obvious trolls that they don't, they're, they're never, they're never going to earn credence, right? Whoever it was, well, I didn't thing, recognize the name. It's not a, it's not an issue of who the name is. It's the, the issue is what the topic is. Yeah. It, it on on one of uh, his last whack and atheist things about me. Um, he it, he was reviewing my interview with Seth Andrews. Seth Andrews and I sat down and had a conversation, and he said, "Remember when I mopped the floor with you, Seth Andrews, and we had a debate? I called Seth, and I was like, have you ever? He's never talked to the guy. It never happened." The guy lies so compulsively, he can't even stop. Like he just, that's not even hard. Google Seth Andrews versus Ken Hovind debate. You won't find shit. And the dude doesn't care. He just says whatever to try to gain some clout. And so like. That was the, that was the video I, I posted I, last night talking about how creationists just say shit. They know it's not true. Yeah. They don't care that it's not true. You can prove it, prove it wrong in a moment. They don't care. They're saying things because they just want you to believe whatever the hell they say. They just won the attention. And so, like, the thing is, for me, I, I have thought about whether or not I want to respond to Kent Hovind and, and his stuff. 
I may someday for fun as a thing, but I don't want to make it. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it once and it's going to be over with. And I'm never going to, I'm never going to sit down and have a debate with the guy because quite frankly, I don't want to use my platform and my talent and my like efforts that I've spent. I've spent so much time going to school, learning crazy things, putting, working really hard to put videos together, trying to build an audience. I've got, I've, I've worked my way up to the platform that I have now and I've worked damn hard for a long time. I'm not going to give that to him for free. And that's what he wants. He wants me to talk about him so that he can use some of my audience to make money. That's all he wants to do. Uh, what I and have, frankly, it's not worth it for me to do that. What I, and uh, it's the same thing I feel about. Right? Yeah, go ahead. There, there's got to be a delay. I, I, I apologize that I'm speaking over you is what, what ends up happening. You're I fine. think that you're, not, you're done talking and then you say something and I'm already speaking. So I apologize for that. It's all Ray good. It's all good. Those. There, there's some people who just try to uh, lift themselves up by your bootstraps. If, you, if yep. you're familiar with that, with that analogy, yeah. Yep, exactly. And that's that's how I feel. That's and speaking of Ray Comfort, it's the same reason I'm not talking about him. Ray Comfort just made a video about me a couple of days ago, um, and he did the things that Ray Comfort does. He took a video of me where I was arguing about something about about a, 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 a reactivity episode of mine, and he took a clip where I was talking about something completely different and said, see, that's bullshit because that's not evolution. It's like, that's not what I was saying. Thank you very much for being Ray Comfort, for doing the same thing you always do and taking someone out of context to have an argument that they're not having so you can win an argument because you can't win an argument with anybody. So you have to make a new argument and take a little clip and fill in their side of the argument for them so you can argue against something that they never fucking said. Um, and, and, and that's the whole video is like, he'll, he'll you know, call me out for like, oh, he's mocking people and then mock me in a thing and be <laughs> weird. And it's just so strange. And then the last like third of the video is him posting arguments with other people. And it's the same shit that he always does where he goes to some college campus and finds some kid. It's like, do you believe in evolution? Yeah. Have you ever seen a dog turn into a monkey? No. Have you ever lied? Yeah. So you're going to hell then. I bet you be Jesus. And the guy's like, okay. And it's like, see, another win for Jesus. And it's like, that's, sorry. I'm, I'm not going to take fucking, I'm not going to spend my time doing that. And also, the honest truth of the matter is, it, I, it would be, too fucking easy for me not to like not to say the debate would be too easy it would be but like it would be too easy for me to make that content and it would get a bunch of views and it'd be fucking pointless content it's played out it's not new it's not fun it's not original it's not interesting it's not gonna be fun to do it's not gonna be fun to make it's not gonna be fun to say it's just gonna be an easy million views and then everyone's gonna forget about it tomorrow and i man i just want to do more fun stuff it's not worth my fucking time to talk to Kent Hoven or Ray Comfort or any of them. Um, and there's one last thing that I think is really important about what you said that I want to put out there because there is a culture around what we do for a living that I feel like a lot of the people, like the audience doesn't really understand. Um, when it comes to debating, um, be, not wanting to fucking deal with a person is not the same as being afraid to debate. I can call up fucking anybody and be like, hey, Joe Rogan, right now, debate me. And if you don't, you're scared. He doesn't know who I am, and he probably doesn't care. He's not afraid of me. He doesn't care. And that's fine. You're allowed to do that. So if somebody challenges you to a debate and you don't want to do it, there's a million reasons. It just means you don't want to fucking do it. We do like <laughs> so most of the audience needs to know we don't fucking owe anybody our time any more than they owe us their time. We're still just people. I don't want to fucking talk to these people. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Since you brought up that aspect, uh, there's something I need to mention because the, the person who said, Why are you afraid of debating Joe Blow, whoever it was? Uh, yeah, 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 that was yeah. Matt Powell official that wrote that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so. Just, just to clarify, when American Atheists was going to have their national convention That's in Phoenix, one, yeah. Arizona in 2020, before we had to cancel because of COVID, I knew that Matt Powell was in Phoenix, where we we're going to have the convention. Mm -hmm. And so he had wanted to do a debate with me. I'm like, look, we're go both going to be in the same town. I think it would be hysterical for me to debate you as an, as an attraction at the American Atheist National Convention. We can debate on creationism. It'll be a hoot. 
We'll have a thousand mm -hmm. atheists in the audience. We'll have a good old time. And I was surprised that uh, that he chickened out of that and then made up a bunch of bullshit yeah, the, stories. Which I, have the, I have the emails. I've seen yeah. the, the kind of excuses he tries to come up with. You know, he, he didn't want to do it. He was afraid. Mm -hmm. So why is Matt Powell afraid to debate me? Yeah, or why is yeah, he talking about me being afraid is, to debate some rando? This is the same guy. He challenged me to a debate as well. I was on a podcast with Creaky Blinder uh, here on YouTube. Um, he, he, I think it was the, one of the first episodes he put out. His show, There We Are Then, um, or Twat for short. Um, and uh, we, we had a great discussion about evolution and all sorts of things. Matt Powell, who Creaky has made a bunch of videos about, jumps in the chat and challenged me publicly to a debate and said, I'll debate you anytime about this and that and the other. And I told him to contact me. I have the emails as well. He emailed me immediately and was like, hey, let's do this and let's talk about these things. I said, yeah, no problem. And then the second I said, but the last email I sent was, by the way, I know Odin. you in the past have been accused of, of uh, uh, deleting parts of your debate and chopping pieces out to make it look like someone did. So the only stipulation I have for this debate is that we both post the full unedited version of the debate to our channels. Full and unedited, both of our channels. That's the only you know, stipulation that I have. That's, that's my only thing. Never talk to me again. Gone. Well, even if you were to keep me since. The second I said you have to post the whole thing and not clip it and just take out little pieces, he didn't want anything to do with it. So, like, yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and and they, they found the, 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 the comment that I, that's the one that's aired up. Now, I got to say, we didn't, we never read. Oh, no, no, now they changed it. Okay, they changed it back again. 1999 from Tattooed yeah, Granny, yeah. my favorite evolutionary duo. Always a great show. Thanks so much, Tattoo Granny. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm I'm going to be in a different studio uh, next month because this one I have to referee dogs. <laughs> yep. yep. I'm going to be in a studio where I don't have quite so many dogs <laughs> trying to uh, play violently. Every... Right. Four ninety nine from Sarah Wilson. Forrest, ever consider making a science series for ex theists about subjects they should learn, like evolution, pseudoscience, don't flat Earth, blah blah. blah. Um, yeah, so I uh, I've already got a series called Light of Evolution, where you can learn about uh, introduction to evolutionary biology. Um, I am working on another series right now called Biologic, which will be coming out this summer, along with uh, Roll for Initiative. Um, at, at the same time, same channel, and everything like that. Uh, biologic is going to just be like intro to bio for non-majors, just basic biology lessons that anybody can learn. Um, and I've got Reacteria, where you can listen to creationist videos from like Answers in Genesis, trying to give their best attempt to explain how macroevolution doesn't work. And I just take that whole video and respond to it. Um, and unlike other channels, I make it very clear the full context of the clip, my full response, and then the next clip. And I say in that in those videos, I'm not going to talk about this part because it's redundant. Feel free to go watch the full video and check to make sure I didn't take anything out of context. And I didn't. I invite the audience all the time to fact check me about making sure I'm not misleading or straw manning, um, because that's what fucking honesty is. Uh, anyway, but yeah, that's the uh, check out my channel. I've already got a bunch of stuff about it, um, uh, and I plan to make more. Thank you very much for the question. It's very kind of you. I can read this one if you want. Nine ninety nine from for Rob Lipton. Moses existed. We always knew him as Mo. He was Shemp and Curly's brother. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you for that, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Five dollars from Skeptoidius. Skeptoidius. I like it. Uh, it's the eloquent R and Raw and the loquacious Forrest Valakai finally able to catch a show after a month. Third shift, yay! I blame Jimmy. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. We all blame Jimmy for everything. The reason we were late starting the show today is because of Jimmy. Even though Jimmy isn't producing this show or anywhere around this show, has zero to do with this show besides writing the paychecks. But fuck him, he did this. <laughs> All right, and five dollars from Doc Don Hogg. For people in Marie's situation, I recommend Satan's Guide to the Bible to learn what you learn what you don't know that you don't know about the Bible and Christianity. 
Interesting. Yeah. And on that same uh, vein, I, I mean, I've, I've been I've been for a, a year now, or a little bit longer, I think, hosting Blasphemer's Bible, which uh, I'm kind of proud of it. It's a number of people that are, you know, uh, former believers, uh, and uh, some of them quite studied in the scripture, and we simply read the Bible and go into what it says. And sometimes we'll have actual, you know, biblical scholars or historians on, and uh, mm-hmm. that, that that's great fun. To, to, to really find out what the Bible says and what it means, we have uh, rabbinical uh, commentary for these Old Testament bits, and um, a lot of it is a lot worse than you think. Yeah, that's I, I should have said that on on Marie's call is like she was asking for book recommendations. Here's one. Yeah, <laughs> read the damn Bible and see how awful it is. You know what I mean? Um, check out uh, uh, the um, Hannah and Jake. Have an amazing like atheist Bible study uh, thing that they do as well. That's a lot of the notes that I have in here from them. They're so fucking cool. By the way, that's so, yeah, John dude. and Jean thing. I did a re- I did a rebuttal of that series too. I did had you really? great yes, John. I heard about that. <laughs> yes, I remember hearing about that. Yeah, because some people comment. They're like, "R and Raw already destroyed this series." And I'm like, "All right, cool. Let them." <laughs> it's it is a silly ass series, dude. Is there's some of the things in there that are so bad and like when you put the whole timeline together like the first few videos i did of them i was like okay this is stupid here's why and here's there's this thing but like now that i've done almost every video in that series like some of the threads coming together where it's like you just argued against something that even you said made sense in another episode what are you doing like what what are you talking about like it's it's so bad uh 10 theoretical dollars from happy dado um, I would love to talk Freemasonry and its religious interpretations with Forrest and Aaron. Um, it's a cult. It's a cult, and I, I know uh, it's uh, largely influenced by Mormons. I, I, I know next to nothing about Freemasonry. I don't think it exists. I've always had to pay for my Masonry. Right, <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, uh, I, I actually know a bit about it, and uh, it's yeah, it's 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 a cult. It's just a cult. It's a religious cult, and. Uh, it's got really, it's one of those ones, like most cults, uh, it sounds real fucking cool at the surface, where we're going to get together and we're going to make ourselves better, and then we're going to make the whole world around us better as a result. And we're going to go out and we're going to do good works, and we're always working on ourselves and always building ourselves and always trying to learn more and be better and do better and be in the service of our fellow man and all this stuff. And when you scratch just a little bit before, below that surface of really shiny gilding you scratch a little bit of that off, and you find a history of racism, Mormonism, uh, cult behavior, stupidity. Um, it's it's bullshit. Um, but, so, but I'm yeah. only in it I don't, for the, the giant elite parties in the mansions where everybody has to wear black robes and masks, except for the strippers. Right. That's, <laughs> there, there are a, a lot of, of Masons that are in it for the booze. I can say that for sure. Um, just in it for the parties. Um, yeah, five pounds from Mystic Mind Analysis. I hope Marie sees this. Look into secular humanism. You sound like and can be a lovely person, whether you are religious or not. Yeah, secular humanism is a great philosophical framework. Um, it's pretty cool. Check it out. Yeah. And then five dollars from Jonathan with a bunch of trees. It's okay. Forrest. It's me. Yeah. I'm sorry. Only you I don't have, have anyone so named Orchard. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I have one more R in my name because I'm uh, fucking cool like that. I can afford it. Um, uh, Ten ass dollars from PhD Tony. Great show, R and Forrest, but you both need to be less shy and retiring, more willing to express yourselves. <laughs> also, there was about 20 seconds of dead air not filled with useful information. Do better. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You're right. We, we really both got to come out of our shells. <laughs> Five dollars from Doc Don Hogg. Wait, men don't get sleepy after sex because our cerebral spinal fluid is now lower and we need to recuperate. <laughs> That's what it is. That's what it yeah, is. Socialism mode off. Squirt. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. <laughs> from the subarachnoid space, straight out your urethra. Um, anatomy nerds get excited. Uh, Five dollars from the Raven Two Hundred. Pronounce he him. Uh, yeah, Aaron Forrest. Aaron Forrest, pardon me. Aaron. My favorite go to guys. For, yeah, I, I don't know who was on the line with me. I'm very <laughs> drunk. Uh, uh, so I'll, I'll try it again. Yeah, Aaron Forrest. My favorite go to guys for evolution. 
Arin, tell your snakes to stop trying to get me to summon snake gods. It's annoying now. <laughs> you know who I want to have I'm on? I want to have... Did you ever see that that preacher guy? He was on one of those like local access like Bible study channels. There's clips of him on YouTube. Um, and he's like, I used to be in this cult. And I was just, I was chosen to be the, uh, the 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 proxy of Lord Shiva. And when I was thirteen years old, my parents sacrificed whatever in front of me, and my upper body turned into a cobra. And like, and all these people were like, wow, oh my god, the devil's real, and like, just absolutely fucking wild. I'm gonna see if I can find that clip. I'll put it yeah, in the I chat if I can. I, I have not seen that one. There was a number of people locally that you might have been talking about until you got to that part. Yeah. And then $10 oh, from Storm Chaser Noah. How are those ear penguins, Forrest? <laughs> Live in large because you can't prove it otherwise, and there's no such thing as zero. I remember that fucking uh, that call. That was one of the first shows I ever did with Matt. Uh, and this dude called in saying that, Zero doesn't exist because God is one and all eternal oneness or some weird shit. And I that was the question. I was like, how many penguins live in my ears right now? And he was like, uh, depends on what you mean by penguin. And it depends on what you mean by ears. And he just could not say zero. Couldn't admit that there was such a thing as something not <laughs> happening. And like, it was crazy. <laughs> Uh, 20 ass dollars, oh my goodness, from Allison the Animal. Hi guys, I came across a weird article about Nobel Prize disease. I understand it hasn't been confirmed, but do you have any thoughts about it? Is it just that if you're smart enough, you can convince any yourself of anything? I don't know about that entirely, but from context here, it sounds like you're saying that like somebody wins a Nobel Prize or something like that, and then they think they can't possibly be incorrect, or like the public thinks they can't possibly be incorrect. Is that what we're hearing? I'm looking it up. I, I have no idea what that could mean. I haven't heard of Nobel Prize disease. The but embrace of have... strange or scientifically un... Okay, Nobel Prize disease or Nobelitis is an informal term for the embrace of strange or scientifically unsound ideas by some Nobel Prize winners, especially later in life. If I had to hazard a guess, assuming this is an actual phenomenon, you know, because I, th I, would, I would be curious. The first thing I would ask is, what's the incidence rates of people believing crazy shit in the general public versus among Nobel Prize winners? Because I would bet that they're about the same because crazy people are everywhere. Some very smart people are crazy and believe crazy things. That happens. Um, I would also say, if, if, if there actually is some sort of correlation there where there actually does appear to be some sort of a trend where it's higher, I would say that... If, like. In order to win a Nobel Prize, you have to make an extreme, exciting discovery, and you've like done something really cool. And in order to do that, you've got to be an out-of-the-box thinker. You can't think within the norm and then discover a new thing with the old data. So new people believing, you know, ha having new heuristics and allowing them to make big discoveries that wins them a Nobel Prize, maybe those same heuristics would also lead you to believe some silly things sometimes. And so maybe allowing yourself to be more of a free thinker sometimes you know to, to, for lack of a better word you, you have that whole thing your mind's so open your brain fell out or something like that you know what i mean maybe that should well, there might be a correlation with being able to think out of the box and not being able to color within the lines yeah exactly exactly yeah so that's i think that that it, if there is a correlation that's how i would explain it i don't know if it's any different than the rest of the world though and so I, that would be the first question that i would ask and also, big caveat on the end, is that all of that is just like armchair psychology from somebody who deliberately isn't a psychologist. So like, just take that with a bottle of salt. You know what I mean? Excuse me, I have a dog fight like under my chair. Get out. <laughs> Brag about it. Love the right, $10 from, from Larry that. Fishman. Are there versions of Darwin's books written in modern English? I read The Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire last year and have had enough of Victorian formal English for several lifetimes. Well, no, I'm sorry. I You're just going to have to put your mind in the 19th century. <laughs> yeah. And no, nobody wants to have to do that. <laughs> like that's, yeah, I, I don't know. Honestly, um, I'm sure somebody's tried it. There's you know, in, uh, modern English Bibles. And shit, so like maybe, I don't know. But 
Uh, not that I know of, Larry Fleischman. I'm so sorry you spent ten dollars for us to tell you. Mm. <laughs> Five dollars from Meridian Heights. Uh, thank you so much for mentioning Greatest Show on Earth, despite Dawkins' recent edginess. R and Raw, absolute legend. Great show. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I uh, in some in some cases, I have no problem separating the art from the artist, and science is one of those cases. Um, there are a lot of great scientific discoveries made by absolutely fucking terrible people. Look up Project Paperclip. I, uh, the, you know, what I mean, so like, just there's there's a lot to be said there. And so Dawkins, um, he was a hero of mine for a long time, and now I I really disagree with what he's doing, and it sucks to see somebody doing something that I think is so harmful for no reason. Um, yeah, he's it's not like he's it's not like he's not used to public fucking outcry. I'm sure he wouldn't have an issue with if he's got his base and he's got this other group over here that are you know uh, uh, trans allies, and there's some overlap there of trans allies that really like him. And I don't think for someone with a career like his, I understand that public backlash fucking sucks. But for someone like him who has built a career off of public backlash, I I think he should be okay to switch sides presented with the right evidence. And so I, I said either, once upon a time, a decade or yeah. so ago, I said that there's gonna when when somebody else did something or said something embarrassing and uh, will you stop dogs? I'm so I can't can't wait to be in my new studio. I cannot fucking <laughs> stop. Stop. I've got three of them right under my desk. Knock it off. I am a yep, nope. Get up. <laughs> what was I saying? <laughs> Get back. You were saying something about Richard Dawkins. <laughs> yeah, I was talking to one of my kids about them about uh oh what, what two things, I guess. One, I'm I'm holding a bulldog right now. It was trying very hard to attack the other dogs. <sighs> So I was talking to one of my kids who disagrees and is upset with the things that Dawkins said, and I said, that's got to be particularly bothersome for you because you met Dawkins. He's, he was riding around in my car. I was driving him around Austin. And then that's, so that's a little awkward. And uh, yeah. there was a time 10, 15 years ago when somebody else had said something stupid and uh, had gotten themselves into controversy. And I said that I, at some point, I'm going to say something inappropriate i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna say something regrettable and i just hope that when that happens that i have the wherewithal to own it and correct it and atone for it rather than yeah. the double down as i'm seeing everybody else doing yeah that's that really is the thing of it is that like i be, part of the curse of the job we have is that Everybody's got implicit biases that they've got to deal with. Everybody's got stupid ideas that they don't know they hold. Everybody's going to slip the tongue and say something they didn't mean to say. Everybody's got, you know, there's, there's going to be an incident for everybody where you're going to offend somebody, piss somebody off, and, and it's going to be hurtful. And that's the biggest thing you can hope for. I really hope that I recognize it, and I hope that I have the guts to fix it. That's, that's all I ever want. Um, and with Dawkins, you know, if you want to disagree whether or not Biological sex is a strict binary with no different. It's like, okay, we can have that argument. It's fine. Like, well, let's talk about it. Let's see. But it's like to to sit here and argue. Like, I heard him say in an interview recently. Like, gender is just this word, this excuse that people have come up with to try to avoid. But no, gender is not a new concept. And literally, like introductory biology textbooks explain the difference between sex and gender, and talk about trans and intersex people. You can't sit here and say, I'm this biological authority, therefore I'm going to ignore modern biology. And like, I don't get, and like, this is like 100 year old information. And so like, you can't expect anybody, like you can't expect anybody in any field to be 100% up to date with every single thing in that field, right? Having a PhD does not mean you know every single thing about every single thing about whatever field you're in. That's fine. There's a lot of shit about biology that I don't know. There's a lot of shit about biology that Dawkins doesn't know. We all know uh, stuff and we all don't know stuff. But this is like a publicly controversial and very politically salient topic that you have chosen to take a strong stance on. Read up on it. And like that sucks for you know, and be open to new evidence. And 
I think what hurts the most about it, because I don't want to sit here and bash this dude. I've never met him. I don't want to talk too much shit about him. It's not like Kent Hovind or Matt Powell, where I'm very happy to explain why I don't like these people for so long. But like the, with this one, like he's done so much good. And what 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 hurts me the most about it is like one of the things that got me excited about science as a kid was an interview with Richard Dawkins, where he explained a time when he was in college and they were arguing about whether or not the Golgi apparatus existed. And his professor was a strong proponent that it didn't exist. And he said this young guy came to the university and gave a lecture about the Golgi apparatus and really beyond a shadow of a doubt demonstrated that it was a thing. And he said that his professor stood up and shook that young man's hand in front of the whole crowded auditorium and said, thank you so much. I've been wrong for all these years. And he said he clapped until his hands hurt and he was so happy to be a scientist. And that's what science is all about. And I loved that interview. And it's what made me one of the things that made me want to be a scientist myself. And now to see that same dude sit here and double down and triple down and quadruple down on things that are in introductory bio textbooks for like non-majors and high schoolers. Like this is very clearly what we know to be the truth in the past, especially 20 years. This is really unequivocal at this point. And he's just up here being like, nah, you no, know, not how I taught it for the past 80 years. No. So it can't be that. It's like, so contradicting, dude, the, the, contradicting the American. <laughs> Contradicting the American Psychological Association and contradicting the Endocrine yes. Society, and and yes. you're a zoologist. Respect for zoology, but that doesn't apply here. <laughs> just, just like that's it's so fucking frustrating. And so, like that's the thing, man. I, I still, I really do. I hold out hope. And I know this sounds super fucking condescending, and I don't care. I hold out I, hope. I don't, don't, don't want to I don't want to bash the man either. As I said, I was. I was proud yeah, to, to, to know a famous person who knew me. That was neat. Mm -hmm. You know, who would the famous person would recognize yeah. me when I showed up? That how often does that happen? You know, and and yeah. so I don't. I, it, it's unfortunate that he has. His, I would know. I I hope that I always know better than to take a stance and start talking shit on things that I haven't studied or don't know about. Right. That's the thing, man. I I I would like to be his friend someday. I'd like to sit down, whether or not we continue disagreeing or not. I, I, w I would love to just like actually have a serious, off camera. Uh, there's no reason to have a fucking big public debate where you're going to have people on both sides rumping in to, you know, to, to, to argue because your guy isn't winning. But just like that for me, I, 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 would, I, I wish that there was a, an opportunity to like actually just like have a human moment about this because I feel like. The, the the guy that I looked up to for so long, and maybe it's just rose-colored glasses of an old hero, you know what I mean? But the guy that I looked up to so long would change his mind with new evidence and make a big fucking public statement like, hey, here's actually how it is, and wouldn't give a shit if he lost a bunch of followers because of it, because he knew he'd gain some new ones. And like that, that's the guy that I wanted to be, was a guy that isn't afraid to stand up and say, hey, I fucked this up, and I don't care if you don't like me about it, I know I'll get new followers later, you know what I mean? I agree completely. I'm going to read this next one. Four ninety nine from yeah, Briggs about this the Divide. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any chance we can get a breakdown on how Fodor and Paul, Mar Paul Marini's assessment of evolution fails? I'm just sick of hearing. Fodor and Paul Marini? Don't know who that is. So no, you may not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you didn't know that either. <laughs> not a clue. Maybe, maybe it's something I've heard and I don't know the name, but like I, I've, that doesn't, who knows? Uh, $20 from Whiskey Spirit Guide. Forrest, it's been a very Monday ish Monday. I'm so sorry. Can you recommend five more books? Dealer's Choice. Aaron, uh, where could you find all of your books? I need to read them too. As always, go Jimmy yourself. Jimmy, I'll be right back. I'm going to grab some from the other room. All right. Well, I, I have one book that would be, there, there, there's the coffee table book that, that, that we are all apes, but that is literally, literally just a coffee table book. Uh, Foundational Falsehoods of Creationism is the one that I, I, I put everything into that I, that I knew until 2016, everything that I knew about the, the evolution versus creationism issue or, or debate, if you want to call it that. Um, and I was going to do another book, or I may still do another book on the infidel reads the Quran, but it's because of uh, publishing issues, copyright issues. I can't make any money on that one, so that one's on hold. 
And uh, I have another one that I should have been done with in January, but is still working on. So more about that when I get closer to publishing. All right, Forrest, what you got? I got, uh, okay, so I got uh, Understanding Evolutionary Development, which I talked about during uh, uh, Marie's call. So there's a little, little understanding by Wallace Arthur there. Um, uh, Chomsky on Miseducation. Chomsky is an anarchist, and this is his take. The whole book is written in terms of like a kind of like a, a, a Socratic discussion, like a, an old Plato book, you know what I mean? Um, uh, about education system in America, especially higher education, and how like, getting a degree from Harvard, 30% of what you learn is how to be a Harvard graduate rather than like the actual, but you're learning how to be this fucking elite science man, not science. And so, um, and so like a lot of this is like just criticism of uh, American imperialism um, and uh, the education system as an arm of the imperialist uh, country I've we been, live in. I've been um, moderately aware of Noam Chomsky since the 60s, oddly enough. Mm -hmm. But uh, more recently, yeah. I've started catching him on, on videos because I'm having to research these topics that, that he speaks about very often, the same things that I'm speaking about. And yeah. if every, everything that I've seen him say so far and, and the, the tests that I've taken to find out where you are in the political compass, mm -hmm. Noam Chomsky and me are in the same spot, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I am an anarchist and a socialist. Um, uh, Chomsky, I believe, is an anarcho-syndicalist, which is, we're in the same ballpark. <laughs> so, yeah, he and I agree on most things. I'm going to put this in the chat, if anybody's curious. Whoops. Um, here is, oh, my glob. There we go. Uh, here's a, a very brief, it's like 11 minutes long. It's just a section of an interview. Uh, it's the crimes of the U.S. presidents with Noam Chomsky, where he just goes through several presidents, I think leading up to H.W. Bush, and just saying like, yeah, so here's some war crimes, and uh, we don't even need to talk about these war crimes, and here's these other ones. Who, who next? Oh, Reagan? Yeah, so let's get into it. And it just, it's crazy. Um, uh, the dawn the of everything. Would, um, not to sidetrack at all, but, right. the, but the crimes of Nixon that, that, that made public news, but somehow didn't make national interest. When, when, the, when yeah. these documents were released a few years ago, the yeah. shit that Nixon did that cost the lives of, of thousands of people because he's just trying to get reelected, right? And then what Reagan did, negotiating with terrorists mm -hmm. to get himself reelected, re right? The, you it, want to it's, about it's frightening to realize how awful a country we have, and at the same time, this does not knowing this does not does not deter my patriotism. It shows me that that that. The, the Constitution does not defend itself. The nation does not have ideals because they were written in by the Founding Fathers. You have to fight the corruption mm -hmm. because you have to know. It, do, you, do you know how bad shit can be? How bad it can get? Look how bad it already mm -hmm. was under this country. Mm -hmm. And you have to know that it did bad things. You can't be teaching American exceptionalism where you censor out and whitewash everything so that there's no embarrassing dark sides of history. No, we have to know that those things happened or we'll be unprepared for mm -hmm. when they happen again. Precisely. And to the person in the comments, if you think that I don't also dislike Obama, you are sorely mistaken. Just because I didn't mention him doesn't mean he isn't guilty of a lot of fucked up shit. The, 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 the president of drone strikes and deportations. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Um, anyway, uh, the, the dawn of everything, uh, new history of humanity. Um, this is another, it's, it's an anarchist uh, take on uh, uh, the human culture and, and, and human evolution and um, uh, just focusing on like uh, kind of like re just looking at a new a new theory a new model for humanity as a whole um it's fucking awesome uh a brief history of feminism uh this is actually written in the form of a graphic novel <laughs> it's it is just a great little book it's lots of fun and it'll there's some shit in here they'll be like are you fucking kidding me right now about the world we live in fuck everybody um and that's a lot of fun uh and then i also love braiding sweetgrass um, by Robin Wall Kimmerer. Uh, she's a Potawatomi uh, woman, and she is writing as a. She's also a biologist, and so this book is her interweaving um, her native culture and native understand, like a kind of worldview, along with her understanding of biology, and it's fucking beautiful. Um, and it's really cool to see, like, there's so many times in that book where, like, shit that I felt as a kid and was told is stupid. She just like confirms and it's like, no, actually, 
this is a reasonable way to think about the and like the, the the if you like anarchism and you like um i don't want to use the word spiritual but like the more like interconnected side of thinking about biology you'll love it um and so like it's it's a really cool book and there's a lot of stuff in there that like like i said it, it, it's things that i didn't know there were words for things that i've always felt in my heart my whole life and then like hearing that there's not only this person identifying it but like a whole culture and like a whole nation like a whole whole conglomeration of cultures and then reading things like a dawn of everything and seeing how you know white supremacist heteronormative cisgendered patriarchal hegemony on europe fucking steamrolled that culture and and just destroyed it and and got rid of it for everybody fucking sucks bro uh and i live in oklahoma where we shoved everybody near the latter stages of the genocide and uh i'm surrounded by those cultures all the time and it's crazy um to grapple with things like land ownership and capitalism and shit and realize there's a whole bunch of people out there that that wasn't even part of the way they saw the world and we're coming in here like it's fucking natural are you kidding me um it's just fucking not and it's it's just fucking not and it hurts my brain and my heart and my brain's heart um yeah anyway five dollars uh, from the raven, the raven Everyone be sure to consensually slap that like button on its big, thick, plump, juicy rump. Jimmy, go take a scissors kick from King Booker. <laughs> I don't know. All these video game references. I, I love uh, uh, American just put somebody I guess, said I was a lefty and said to, Horace would lambast you for saying he's just left. I'm so far left you get the guns back. I'm real. I'm, I'm about as left as you can left. Um, you, yeah, it's hard to find somebody more left. Um, it, we, we could have a long conversation about it. Uh, 10 ass dollars from Alice and the Animal. I want to know who out of Forrest and Aaron has the most interesting fact for Testadines. Winner gets 10 points. Mine? Okay. Mine um, is... Yeah, you go first. That I was wrong? I was wrong about them. I was wrong about their evolution. I gave a presentation in i don't know orange county so, somewhere in southern california i gave a presentation on the evolution of turtles wherein i put myself on the on the side that, that i'm hoping that, that the evidence will reveal that they are the last surviving anapsids uh and then the very team that i was on in south africa on the, the, i went to a paleontological expedition in south africa and the team that i was on found the fossil that proved me wrong they found Unotosaurus. I got to hold the fossil in my hand that proves that I'm wrong, that they, they are, that, that, that uh, they actually are, uh, they're, they're more, they're more closely, they are uh, true reptiles. They are in the Archosaur line, closer to crocodilians, which of course explains why they have hard shelled eggs. And the Unotosaurus fossil has the, it doesn't have a shell yet, but it has the very, very wide Laid like uh, ribs, so it's almost a shell made of ribs, and then the the plastron develops after that, and then the carapace. Anyway, that's that's my fact about yeah. turtles. Uh, I think that the the most interesting thing about turtles is that um, their shells didn't evolve all at once. Um, the the there's there's the shell comes in two parts. There's the uh, the plastion on the bottom and the carapace on the back. Um, and, uh, they, they evolved separately and uh, I think the plastion evolved first and then the carapace later. And if I remember correctly, I was trying to Google this really quick to make sure I got this right. And I couldn't find anything on it, but like, I'm 99% sure somebody fact check. I am 99% sure that they it like went back and forth in and out of the water during their evolution. Now, like, you know, whales went back. I'm 99% sure whales evolved their plastion in the water. And then out on land evolved the carapace. So it was getting predators from the bottom and then predators from the top. And you confused like, me a moment because you said whales evolved their plastron. Right. Yes. And I meant it too. Whales and their shells. Everybody knows. Um, but like, yeah, the, the, I'm pretty sure that turtles or testodines in general, they, they came out of the water as reptiles, went back, got a plastion, came back out, got a carapace. I'm 99% sure it's something like that. I could be wrong. 
I know for sure the Plasteon and Carapace came at different times, but I'm pretty sure there was like a weird back and forth situation going on there. I'll double check it. Um, and somebody can call me stupid in the comments if I'm very wrong. Uh, somebody can call me stupid in the comments even if I'm right. That, that's, kind the that's, yeah. that's kind of the norm. Kel. Yeah, that's kind of the norm for for turtles is to go in and out of the water. It's it's what they yeah, do. Yeah, they just do their thing. Yeah. <laughs> 499 from Kung Fu Kel. Thank you, Forrest, for mentioning a Hannah and Jake Bible read along uh, uh, on one of these shows. Can you repeat God, the God is an abusive boyfriend analogy again? Yeah. Um, so basically, that was a, a, something I've said a few times. Is, uh, when we're talking about the horrors of religion and the insidiousness of the teachings, is like, he hurts me because I need to learn. I did something wrong. I deserve to be punished. He's so smart and I'm so dumb. He's so strong. I'm so weak. Every, everything's a lesson. He's just trying to teach me. <clears throat> and if I was smarter, I'd already get it. I'm st I'm broken. I'm I'm nothing without him. I need him to survive. I'm worthless, and he is the only thing that gives my life meaning. Every single part of that is talking about an abusive boyfriend. And yet, those are all the things that everybody says about God all the time. Five dollars from. <laughs> Will you shut up? Ah, damn dogs. Five dollars from Doc Don Hog. Shrimp uh, is bugs. Discuss. By the way, lobster used mm -hmm. to be relegated to prison food. True on both counts. Yeah. Uh, it depends but, on the definition of bug, remember. doesn't it? There is a definition yeah, well, of bug yeah, so, only to a subset of insects. Uh, strictly speaking, you know, I, I think bug is supposed to be like if it has a proboscis or something like that. But like, yeah, that's the whole thing is that like arthropods are all like uh, insects, arachnids, crustaceans. If it has a bunch of legs and a hard exoskeleton, it's an arthropod. Um, and so shrimps and crabs and crawfish and lobsters and all these things, they are so much more related to bugs that sometimes you, you would recognize a crustacean as a bug. Do you like roly polies, otherwise known as pill bugs, otherwise known as a wood louse? Those are crustaceans. They have gills. They're just adapted to life on land, and their gills have to stay moist. That's why they live under like rotting logs and shit. That they are they're, also they're the only. They're the only fully terrestrial um, crustacean. Yeah, yeah, and so right. they're just super. Nine ninety nine. Cool um, Will you shut up. Nine ninety nine from never again. <laughs> Go on. New studio next month. <laughs> yep. Two of my favorites. Thank you both for your continued contributions to the advancement of thought and question. It's freeing and question. It's freeing to break free of religion. Oh, I guess yeah, there's there punctuation there. Advancement of yeah, thought I, and I question. Okay. Also, uh, the thing about uh, lobster being prison food. Yeah, I think that was in France, if I remember correctly. The, the prisoners ate lobster and there was actually like a, like a, a, a serious like human rights thing about like how dare you feed these prisoners lobster more than twice a week. That's inhumane. Is it because it was just peasant food. It was just the shit that everybody had all over the place, lobster. <laughs> okay, five dollars uh, from Larry. Five dollars. Oh sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh Caesar died the way he lived with many men thrusting inside of him. What a way to go. What a way to go. <laughs> Then four ninety nine from Jamnik O six. Great show. Enjoyed the long call with Marie. Forrest, please share more about the issues with Hasbro slash D and D. Yeah, so uh, D and D is owned by Wizards of the Coast. Wizards of the Coast is owned by Hasbro, and there was like not only it, it's a company that's been a long, around for a really long time, and so it's got some problematic shit. The fact that they have like races, like orc and human and dwarf and 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 you know whatever. And they use the word races for that led to a lot of problems where people were like, hey, this kind of has it, it, it smells weird when you look at it the way. Um, also, they had like a monkey person that they introduced. They had like a beast skin type thing that was like a monkey person. And it it, it was kind of problematic the way they rolled that out as the like it, it just it, there's some stuff there. Um, and uh, the biggest thing that I think a lot of people had an issue with or the thing that really fucked them up a lot was. Um, that they started trying to make everything, everything pay to play. Um, and like they had, uh, uh, what was it? Um, like, like the D and D beyond 
that they had online where you could build character sheets and keep track of your character sheets online and like they were trying to make like you have to pay different amount to like even be able to see the different things to like and like a lot of people just had a lot of problems with the company and the company has kind of been smeared a lot it's not really my space um i'm more in the science and atheism side of the world the ttrpg community is a totally different animal that has you know their own they, they, there's somebody in that space that could speak a lot more highly of it um or, or, or i could say that can speak a lot more intelligently about it um one of them is my dear friend and business partner jesse jerdak jesse is a professional dm and maker and like works in the ttrpg space a lot he was my business partner on this project he was the dm for this project he's like um fucking awesome dude uh and he has a, a really good talent for explaining the big problems with companies like Hasbro. Also, they like laid off like hundreds and hundreds of people like the day before Christmas or some dumb shit. Um, people are mad at Hasbro and for a lot of good reasons. And so other games like Tales of the Valiant, which is owned by a company called Cobalt Press, are growing in popularity rapidly. Um, because if you can understand, there's a reason why like there's D&D and then there's like Warhammer, which is the same fucking game, just with different options. Um, you, but you play it the same way. And it's the same thing with Tales of the Valiant. It's just different options, different ways to do things that I think actually are more functional. Um, I had a tremendously fun time play, playing Tales of the Valiant. Um, the best thing that I liked about it was that you could make like special styles of magic. So you didn't have just strictly cleric spells and strictly wizard spells, and you don't have any crossover. You could make your own magic style where it's centered around a theme, but the theme has to make sense with your GM. And then you could build a spell list from any spell slots in any spell like category you need um based on what you were doing and why and they have like detailed instructions on like how to convert any D, &D spell into a tov spell in a way that works and how to make sense of it and how to put it where it needs to put and like just super cool stuff uh so yeah um really really fun game tales of the valiant fucking awesome and subscribe to me and subscribe to jesse jerdak so you can watch uh, Roll for Initiative when we play our fucking amazing game. I'm going to put his link down there in the chat right now. This is Jesse's channel right there. Go subscribe to Jesse Jerdak and tell him I said hello. Okay. Then $9.99 from Never Again. I have but one request. To watch Aaron stroke the ends of his mustache and say, Yeah. I'm not sure what the hell that's supposed to reference, but I did it, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, $20 from the Raven 200. Forrest mentioning the church as being gay friendly all of a sudden. You're welcome, Jimmy. Reminds me of a pastor in my hometown. Today he preaches love. Seven years ago, he preached that LGBT people should unalive themselves. Yeah. And then the, the social, like the Oberton window kind of shifted um, and the social change came along. And we all agreed that we're going to be cool with gay people. And so the churches either had to adapt or die because a lot of young people, especially, weren't going to church anymore because they were anti-LGBT. And so in order to retain membership and make sure that their membership didn't die off, they had to start saying, it's okay, we love the, the sinner but hate the sin. And then that lasted for a little while. And then they were like, no, actually, God just loves everybody. It turns out we read it again and it said it this way now. And then that's what it is today. Um, yeah, just it's, it's business. It's all business. Yep. Next one is there. We got a couple more. I can see them still popping up. Mm hmm. But they're not showing up. They're showing up there. Okay. There $10. Yeah, that was there. Nathan. Nah. An. Uh, I'm just super chatting to see if my username is pronounced as Nauthan or Nathan. I would Don't pronounce it. I would pronounce it Sodium Thorium On. That's what it is. <laughs> sodium Thorium On. I don't think there is an element with the symbol AN. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I don't, I don't think so. Then $13.99 Californian. From the day's adventure, thank you for all you do. Have either of you read Sapiens? New. No. I have had it sitting right here for fucking years, and I've yet to read it. <laughs> I, I haven't <laughs> had the time. I just haven't had the fucking time. I hear it's good. 
I've yet to take the time to. T- I, I'm busy with like 15 other things. Um, and yeah. the You're amount of going, shit that I have to read. School. Yeah, I'm doing a second master's because I'm fucking stupid. And so the amount of things that I have to read in a week anyway, I don't have time for pleasure reading, dude. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I know other people that have time for video games and shit. I do not. That I, sounds great. I have, to, <laughs> I, have, I have to involve all the time I can into, the, into researching and composition for content on my channel. Mm-hmm. Uh, $5 from James Leo with no message, but thank you very much for the $5. It's very kind of you. And $5 Canadian from Terry Whispeler, De Whispeler, I guess. Uh, anti-trans activists holding daily protests in my town in Canada. I want to confront them. Advice on how or mm. if to proceed. They are attacking inclusive EDU. Yeah. Education, yeah. Um yeah. Be safe. Yeah. Be safe I showed up I, I showed up to protest a local hate preacher and I was wearing a kilt. And not, not, not and, and a utility kilt at that. Uh made of leather, no less. It was a goth utility kilt. And I still had them trying to trying to trying to humiliate me for for insinuating that I was feminine for wearing a kilt. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh can't say like the 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 transphobic crowd um there are a lot of things uh intuitive culturally uh uh intelligence uh, not not among those things. Um I I can say like if yeah if you're going to go confront these people um be safe. People are fucking crazy and you would be uh horrified if you knew how many people show up to these protests armed and looking for a problem. Um so be careful. Don't get into a fight. And if things look dicey, don't be afraid to walk away. Um, the, yeah, some, some the, you, you win every fight, the, you leave. Some people yep. just want to be in the so, news. Yeah, exactly. Um, so be fucking safe. Uh, I, I would encourage you, if, the, if people are protesting inclusive education, they're probably trying to get into school board meetings to give speeches and stuff. Just also sign up and give speeches. Don't go out there and start an argument on the street corner. It's not going to help. And you're not going to change any minds, and you're only going to put yourself in danger. Um, but I also will take, you know, responsible. Like I, that is the responsible, honest answer that I can give you. I will also be honest with you in saying that most of the protests that I go to and the, the things I do, I could be a lot safer too, because it's more important to me to get out there and like try to spread truth. And I, I have been in dangerous situations because of it, and I don't encourage anybody do that uh because it's dangerous and stupid so just you be safe don't don't do as i say not as i do please and uh uh 699 uh from the day's adventure just to say hello again thank you very much it's very kind of you five dollars in the raven 200 my favorite show you do aaron is reading joseph smith uh tomer dash not sure what that means (laughs) is my favorite reader aside from you and grandma forrest you're awesome thank you very kindly for that whenever tomer reads a passage that has an m dash he says ah. dash and then <laughs> nice. okay and then five let's see five dollars from david smith thank you forrest and r and raw for answering my question it would help a lot if someone says that a, says that fool in his heart thing to me it would help a lot if someone yeah. says that fool in his heart thing to me. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's good. Cool. Well, thank you much. Appreciate that. Can't wait for that new studio. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot Five rest from the Laga. Uh, Speaking of dogs, is there an update on the puppy that invaded Forest Stream the other day? Uh, I ate him already. Gone. Snacked him right <laughs> up. Yep. <laughs> No, it, uh, we we were just we were. It turns out we were puppy sitting, and I didn't know that until it happened. And so he lived in my house for a little while, uh, and then I got the carpets cleaned, and he's gone. And so he's back where he goes. Uh, and and uh, my carpets have been freshly steamed uh, because puppies, and I don't like it. <laughs> and I then, do love that clip though with Austin, just like, oh, and would you look at that? There's a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> Five dollars from Monkey at Typewriter. 
Hey, I just got back from D and D. You mind recapping the show real quick <laughs> on Dawkins? There's just a yeah, lot dude. of clout available for for people to red pill. Sad. Yeah, it's it is it's like that. What what? So so this is not disparaging Richard Dawkins specifically because we've I've already said a bunch of things about him. I don't want to sit here and trash the guy, but like just speaking to the whole the red pill community, um, that whole thing. Yeah, if you make a lot of fucking brainless arguments um, and just like say blatantly untrue things about the world that kind of fit with the whole I woke up in America and this seems like common sense now uh, uh, rhetoric. Yeah, you can get a lot of views very quickly by a bunch of people who have never touched a boob um, and and want to feel powerful. So like, yeah, that whole audience um, of the people who listen to the Ben Shapiro's and the Jordan Petersons and the of the world. Uh, it's just, it's so fucking sad to see snappy, quippy arguments that are used against fucking college freshmen uh, m- sound like it's an actual academic discussion. That fucking sucks. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Then five euros from Old Man's Pain. Please keep going on for like the next eight hours. <laughs> And hold my hand as I go through evolutionary pain in a fetal position on the bathroom floor after too spicy food. I would love some spicy food right now, and I'm mad jealous of whatever you're having. I'm going to go out there and cook like way too many chicken legs and just douse them in cayenne. Have a fun time. $5 Today was my wife's uh, birthday. Oh, really? Today was my wife's birthday, and she wanted to have dinner in a in an Asian place that has uh, like the the hot pot kind of thing. So we did that, and they they have a they have a, a sauce and season and pepper bin. So we just like I get just fill a bowl of all the different extra spicy stuff to just dump it all in there. Hell yeah, hell yeah! Oh man, I want some spice. I've been I've been incorporating more spice. I so I did the um. Uh, the hot ones challenge over on my channel where I taught about the science of capsaicin and everything. And I bought like all these hot sauces and everything like that. And they're, they're damn good, but oh my blob, they're insane. And so I've just been like that. There's one like the Zuzu sevens pot. It was like the, the, the second to hottest one they had. Um, Cause the hottest one they have is pepper X and it tastes like asshole, but like the, 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 the Zuzu seven pot, I've just been dousing everything. And that's so fucking good, dude. Uh, Doc Don hogs and another $5. Uh, if you won't teach your kids about anarchy, Forrest Valk guy will. When in doubt, dissect the boy. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, dude. You get it. And then nine ninety nine from Captain Zero. What would you say is a secular equivalent to atonement? I don't believe in any gods, but I'm grappling with guilt and I'm curious whether uh, if there are parallels to atonement for atheists. Thank you. Well, it, it, my thought on justice is that it should be less on vengeance less on punishment and more on making things right right so that's like where we 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 settle a lot of things through lawsuits that's one way of making things right right so uh, that, that is that not the same concept as atonement yeah i i think i mean you know, there's no reason to say it's a, you have to have a fucking lawsuit every time you do something wrong <laughs> i would just say like well, yeah, what I'm saying is, if you're if most of the time, the punishments that we do to people doesn't benefit the victim of the crime. You know, mm-hmm. there should be yeah, something. Exactly, bad. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think you should uh, just try to do better. Like the 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 actual way to show you're sorry is to not do the same shit twice, um, and to try to be better than you were the last day. So, like that's the thing. If if you can apologize, do it. If you can't apologize, at least learn and grow from it. Um, just atonement is kind of like this thing where it's like in a religious sense i feel like it's well i told a priest about it and i prayed and now i don't have to think about it anymore and when in yeah, reality it's all that should yeah exactly so, so I don't now need to go i'm, I'm excused yeah, yeah i think you know go go do your best to make it right do your best to apologize do your best to make it right and do your best not to do the same stupid shit again those are the things you do and if you can't do one of those maybe you can't even do two of those you can at least always do the third one. Um, and so like, you know, just, just, just try to be better every day. I've, I've fucked up. I have shit that I feel guilty about. I do better and I move on and we're good. And I, I, it's just keep going. $5 I, from, I, I just, I just always face I'm sorry. Challenge. 
murder fewer people this year than last year. That's all you can do. That's the best. Not, not none, just fewer, you know? Uh, Five dollars from Zojack Studios. Hey, guy. Guys, both. I, uh, I emailed you both about this. Aaron, thank you for getting back to me. I'm sorry I didn't. I get. I very rarely have time to respond to emails. Um, I want to call and continue, but didn't have time. And then there's another part to this. Basically, someone tried to tell me that sex isn't a biological process. How would you handle someone telling you that? Um, I would say that everything that a living thing does is a biological process. So I guess necrophilia is only a half biological process. Beyond that, I, I don't know how anyone could justify that statement. I think if picking your uh, nose is a biological process, then certainly sex would be. Surely sex is, yeah. That that's <laughs> man. I I have heard people say so like biological sex as a concept, like like you know, the, how sex occurs, what sex is, you know, either male or female or intersex or or, or somewhere all these different things. Um uh, 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 true hermaphrodism, sequential hermaphrodism like that. That whole structure I have heard people take the argument that sex isn't binary and take it so far as to say biological sex doesn't exist. Um, that, that there just is no such thing and that actually this is just a function of what life sometimes does and we can't label it. That, I so, think, is equally silly. I mean, um, I mean, don't become zygotes. Yeah, it's, it's just, just I think that... That stretch is as silly as saying that it is a strict and immutable binary. It's it's the same like you're you're either ignoring a bunch of data or you're ignoring the meaning of a bunch of data. And like I don't know which one's worse. Um, I, I, I'm probably saying it doesn't exist at all is worse. I would say, but like that I have heard that. So maybe that's what they were talking about is to say sex isn't a biological process. So as to say that biological sex just isn't even real at all. Um, I think that's silly um you could make the argument like that just like species a species isn't a real thing but it is a useful box that we can draw around stuff in the same way male female this kind of stuff it's boxes that we draw around stuff that doesn't necessarily mean that the boxes actually exist however we can say for sure that sex is a thing having sex is a thing making offspring is a thing so like I don't. I don't. I. I. I think that's a, a dramatic stretch and oversimplification of a complex argument. Weird. Real well, weird. Thank you for asking. I'm sorry putting, I didn't email you back. Putting the gametes into the place where they can mix is a process itself. I don't. I don't see yeah. how there's how there can be an argument against that. Then 1999 yeah, very, very from from Plank. Dear Arn and Forrest Valkai, your discussions led me from theism to atheism. Thank you very much. Uh, Arn, your influence sparked my passion for astrophysics. Forrest, your guidance ignited my love for biology. Grateful for your wisdom, Plank. Thank you very kindly. Thank you so much, Plank. That's very kind of you. That's very, very sweet. Congratulations on your atheism. 499 from Marked Up Media. Forrest, have you seen all the religious nuts talking about the upcoming eclipse next month? It's a sign from God. It's all over TikTok. One of the dumbest things I heard is that this is the, the, the eclipse that happened a few years ago. Back, I think it was 20, 2019, I think it was, um, or something. Uh, the eclipse that happened back in 20-something so with, with a one in it. And this eclipse are going to cross paths. The, the paths, are, and is it like this perfect X somewhere in Indiana where the paths of these eclipse cross? And that's never happened before. And it's like, do you realize there have been other eclipses? And so necessarily all of the paths of every eclipse, if there's been two eclipses, likely they've crossed paths. And there's been a lot of eclipses, y'all. And so, like, I don't know. Like, you can look if, up a map of every arguing, eclipse that's ever crossed over the U.S. And there's, like, five billion crossing paths because that's how fucking eclipses work. What? Like, and you're not going to get a perpendicular cross out of it. Yeah, it's not. It's not a perfect. It's 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 a fucking sphere. So like, what? <laughs> Five dollars yeah, from no, two billion three twenty three. We just reread the Bible, and it says we can chew tobacco. It does, and anything else you want as well. <laughs> 
five dollars from Dread Empath sixty nine with no message, just some kind dollars. Thank you very much. It means a lot. Very sweet of you. Five dollars from Jonathan, and they don't stop coming, 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 and they don't. And they don't. Uh, twenty dollars from my kind of voice. Uh, my kind of voice, Dean. I get you. How do you deal with pre-subs like Darth Dawkins? I've been seeing him pop up a lot lately. Uh, do you guys just avoid? Love you guys. I don't know who that is. He's one of the two people that I mentioned that I have never debated, but that but are obviously never going to be of worth. So we'll never earn attention. Okay. Obvious professional trolls. Yeah, I, I uh, just typed in the name, and I'm seeing uh, a lot of people that I know talking about why. <laughs> like it's just like more dishonest bullshit from this person. So yep, I don't know. Um, I'll I'll look them up. I don't know who that is, but uh, it's probably a good thing that I don't. Uh, Four ninety nine from Smola. No, oh, sorry, you're going. Four ninety nine from Smola says uh, Aaron is the goat. For showing up at Professor Dave and Dillahunty debates, and the line is the goat for hosting them both. Hell yeah. Thank you. Five dollars from Ellipse Jareth. Thank you very much for the five dollars. That was very kind of you. Five dollars from Monkey at Typewriter. Why are monotremes the purest mammals? Because they're untainted. <laughs> For well, both, any favorite horrifying biology facts? <laughs> I'm writing that shit down. That's really good. Well, uh, since you mentioned monotremes, we could mention the echidna with its uh, four-headed penis. Yeah. Uh, and each head has tentacles. It's a Lovecraftian... Horrifying biology facts. Uh, it's a Lovecraftian love story. Look... Look up trypanosomes. Just Google trypanosomes and have fun never sleeping again. <laughs> $5 from Hojack Studios. To try and take this a little further, they said that a biological process is only chemical reactions. And don't worry, Forrest, I understand you're busy. They, they, they think that biological process yeah. is only chemical reactions? What? They don't yeah, that's... Biology is chemistry in motion is an old thing that's been said. But then you have to say that there is no such thing as a biological process. If you're going to dismiss so, sex as just chemical reactions, everything that ever happens in biology is just chemical, chemical reactions. The fact that I just understood what you said and I'm now making a response to you is because of neurotransmitters in my brain. It's because of ATP burning energy to flail my arms around like it. Everything's fucking chemical reactions. What's the point of what you're saying, if that's what you're saying? What a weird now, thing. Mastication is a process within the process of, uh, of, of food digestion. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Uh, fucking, I also, I was typing that into my fucking, I've got a bunch of dad jokes uh, that are lined up for, like, streaming purposes and stuff. And I, I had this one, uh, um, what do sea creatures get the most stressed about? Current Go events. Ahead. $5 from Data Ray. Forrest, did you hear about the topologist who was asked if the Earth was flat or a sphere? He said yes. I like that one. I like that one a lot. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, the, the, the fucking... I, my favorite childhood memory was building sandcastles with my dad until my mom took his ashes away. <laughs> $4.99 from Justin Harding. That's very kind. Thank you for the $4.99. I'm going to enjoy every one of those $4.99. That's okay, the end of the so show. I'm, the show is I'm over. I'm guessing that's the end. Yeah, it's it's all done. It's all done now. Now we all we can go home, even though we're both already at home. Uh, thank you so much to everybody who tuned in and watched and enjoyed this show. Uh, thank you so much for everybody who tuned in and watched and didn't enjoy this show. We appreciate you as well. Um, uh, thanks so much for all our super chatters. Thanks so much for all the callers. 
Thank you so much to our call screeners. Thank you so much to our moderators. Thank you so much to a Morgan for producing. Uh, and thank you so much to, to just everybody who uh, thought about uh, camels today. You know, thank you for helping me deconstruct. Y'all are bomb explosion heart drop. Thank you, Ann Clark, for your $5. Thank you for, and congratulations on your deconstruction. That's awesome. Uh, thank you to everybody for being here. Uh, that's the end of our show. Aaron, do you have anything to send us off with? Uh, thank you for Matt uh, to Matt Powell for making me look awesome by being a you know coward in, in our debate. Uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you, Matt Powell, for five dollars. He sent in five dollars, <laughs> Matt. That money is going to help fund atheism. We're going to spread the message of atheism. We're going to help take more people away from God. We're going to spread more uh, 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 truths about evolution. Um, there's going to be a lot more butt sex because of your five dollars you have donated to the cause and uh, uh rim jobs are on the rise thank you matt powell for your contributions we appreciate it we're going to hybridize um, monkey fish drugs yes yes <laughs> and and other such abominations we're we're going to read the bible backwards we're going to do all sorts of things um with that, uh, please make sure you subscribe to me and to Jesse Jerdak so you can see Roll for Initiative when it comes out in the June. We're very proud about it, and we want you to see it. Have an awesome rest of your day. Uh, stay happy. Never stop learning. Bye. Oh. I'm going to keep waving. I'm going to keep waving until it's...